Clear skies, 66 degrees, and Saturday in Clinton, South Carolina. It's the perfect setting for a little college football from Bailey Memorial Stadium and a matchup of two future Big South Conference opponents. It's the host, Presbyterian College Blue Hose, against the visiting Hampton University Pirates. Alongside John Ork, I'm Brett Williams. Thanks for coming along with us here this afternoon on the BSN on ESPN+. Presbyterian comes in 2-2, two and two, dropped its Big South opener last week at Kennesaw State. Now the number two team in the country at FCS, 56 to nothing the finish there, although Kennesaw has been running through teams right and left. Hampton, meanwhile, comes in 2-3. and three. They're an independent this season and just knocked off Lane College out of Division II at home last week. So both of these teams, John, have played some interesting matchups. We've seen a couple of NAIA schools come here to Bailey Memorial this year so far. PC gets an interesting test today against the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, this will be a true test of exactly where this is more of an equal team that we're, we're going to be used to. Kennesaw, I know, is probably going to be two to three years out from moving up, probably in the Sun Belt Conference with Troy State, Georgia Southern, Coastal Carolina, those kind of teams. And they, they, they fit that mold so well down there at Kennesaw, and they're just growing and growing a ton. This is more of, a, of an equal playing field for PC and Hampton. It's going to be a good game today. Neither of these teams has beaten another FCS. PC's two wins have come against the NAIA opponents, and both of Hampton's wins have come against D2. They will only share the Big South membership next year. Hampton's first year in the conference for football, PC's last before transferring to non-scholarship and eventually to the Pioneer Football League. The Blue Hoes have only scored. We're going to actually step aside. And when we come back, we will have kickoff for you. Hampton and Presbyterian College from Bailey Memorial Stadium in Clinton, South Carolina. This is Big South Football on the BSN on ESPN+. Plus. Big meal paid for by Hardee's. Welcome back to Bailey Memorial Stadium. Tommy Spangler in his eighth year at the helm of the Presbyterian Blue Hose, his second of his second stint after previously being the head coach from 2001 to 2006 at five out of six winning campaigns here at PC. Blue Hose just had two of 10 winning seasons in the interim between his head coach tenures. Hampton won the toss and deferred, so it'll be the Blue Hose offense on the field first. And kicking off for the Pirates, Evan Lomax. Special teams, an area in which the Pirates did not return many players. Both of their punters are new, a redshirt freshman and a transfer. And Lomax, again, a true freshman from Suffolk, Virginia, not all that far from Hampton Roads, where the Pirates hail from. Deshaun Davis back deep to return for Presbyterian fourth in the D1 era in kickoff return yardage. The cannon sounds. We are underway. Presbyterian and Hampton on ESPN+. Plus. Davis across the 25, creating some space out across the 32. Nice spin move by Davis. Get a cut, about six or eight extra yards there. That's what Davis can do. Doesn't matter when he touches it or how. He can hurt you in a number of ways. And so we'll see the Blue Hose offense led, as usual, by the quarterback, John Walker, although we are expecting to see a mix of two quarterbacks leading the way for PC after Walker was banged up in Kennesaw State as he was taken out late in the first half. Jordan Morgan finished off the rest of the way, but Walker gets the green light to start here against Hampton. Comes out with Zola Davis to his right. And hands it off to number 13, who tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage and fails to do so. Loss of one brings up second and 11. Good play by number 53, the defensive end there. Just read, read that we were going to give the ball to Davis from the get-go. Very, very aggressive defense they're playing uh, so far, Hampton. You'll also see two running backs for PC. Both of them are in now flanking Walker, Zola Davis and Jarius Jeter, the Thunder and Lightning, respectively. Walker in shotgun on second and long. He'll hand it off to Davis once again up the middle, trying to find space, wrapped up by a host of Pirates, and brought down. He'll get two with forward progress. Desmond Sturdivant leading the way on the tackle for Hampton. Defensive line for Hampton looks looks really good right now. They're, they're, they're not giving up much, and the offensive line for Presbyterian is not, not driving them off the ball very much. Zola almost broke that thing if he could have cut to the right just a little bit. 
Hampton's D-line, all veterans. One is a transfer, but nonetheless a redshirt junior, Norman Oglesby, the D-tackle transferred from Cincinnati. So third and eight here for PC. Ball sets at the Blue Hose own 33. Empty backfield for Walker. Blitz. Has some protection over the middle. It's complete. Here's Deshaun Davis. First down across the 50 and down to the 43-yard line of Hampton. First down, Blue Hose. Good empty backfield set. Got all our skill players involved on the play. Davis right off the slant route. You know you got a good combination when you got Pearson and Davis on the same side of the field. It's very, very tough on the defense to cover those two. Something anyone who watches Presbyterian football knows is the Blue Hose have speed, led by number five and number two, to your point. And off up the middle, here's Davis once more. And again, he'll only get about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. The right defensive end, 53 for Hampton, is really making some good plays in there. That's a second tackle of his in like four plays. That would be Anthony Jones, he's freshman actually, out of Virginia Beach. He's actually a, a linebacker and he's cheating up half the time to play him like a defensive end. Well, pump fake for Walker now in some trouble and nearly picked off. Looking for Zola Davis out of the backfield and on the coverage for Hampton, Tyler Frazier. Got a flag on the play there. Looks like offsides on Hamp. And it is indeed offside. When, when you get an aggressive defense, you want to run screens and draws when they're really coming at you and trying to pass rush real hard. That's what you want to run, screens and draws. It slows the rush down. Penalty something to look for today. Hampton last week again cruised against Lane College, but the Pirates were penalized 10 times for 88 yards. PC, on the other hand, tied for the least penalized team in the Big South with just 25 infractions on the season. So second and five from the 35. A little push around the right side for Davis. Check that Jarius Jeter with the carry for the first time. Tough sledding up front for uh, PC. Can't get the running game going yet. Pirates winning the battle in the trenches here early, and PC's O-line has been a bit banged up as of late. Last week, Gavin James and Ethan Williams did not play. They're both back in there today as George Crosby slides over back to right guard, his true position. James only got back out to practice on Tuesday of this week. Third and short from the 34. Walker quick out to the right side, it's complete. First down, PC and more. Dante Myers down toward the 15 yard line, marked out of bounds right there. And now the Blue Hose are in the red zone. Good move by Myers to, to, to evade the first tackler right there and get a lot of yards after catch. And you can see him put that move on him. That's an extra 10 yard for Myers. The second, third down conversion of the drive for the Blue Hose. Only made it into the red zone one time last week at Kennesaw State. Low snap, but Walker gets it up, flings it out to the outside. Keith Pearson in the slot. A little fancy feet, but he'll get nowhere. That play is designed for Pearson. If he can get the ball with enough time to make one guy miss because you only have one blocker out there and you got two defenders. Donald Smith, the corner out of Danville, Virginia, on the tackle. Brings up second and ten. The PC having some success over the middle and not much else thus far in the first drive. Lola Davis in motion, handoff up the middle to Jarius Jeter, runs into a pile, gets a couple of yards down to the 13, he'll bring up third and eight. Question is now, do you try to throw the ball, which you've been successful with, or do you try to hang on to a, a pretty easy field goal by, by running another running play? Bringing in more wide receivers looks like they're going to go with the pass. Yeah, I got to imagine first drive of the game, you want to take seven if you can get it. 
PC has only attempted one field goal all season. One back in the backfield, two receivers out each side, third and eight from the 13. Walker back to pass, swings it to the outside. Myers again, first down and touchdown. Oh, it looks no, like they're going to say out. he stepped out yeah. at the two. I think the Blue Host fans are just starting to figure that out. Myers playing a big part already in the offense, and he, he wasn't even li really listed as a starter. No, Myers has been coming in for Keith Pearson. Yeah, but they're well, both in there now. That he is, and that was just a mistake, kind of lost his balance. He had that touchdown. Instead, it's first and goal from the two, as he does nonetheless pick up the fresh set of downs. Handoff, Jeter pushing forward. Can he get there? Looks like he'll be just short. Spotted just inside the one. Bringing it, bringing out Myers, bringing in more of a, a tight end fullback type type player. Put him in the wing. Yeah. It's Cody this, Montgomery who comes yeah. in. Jeter to the left side of John Walker. On second and goal from the one. Hampton really stacked up in there. Give it to Jeter again. Bounces off a of one man. Can't get past the second. Do you, did you see how the, the, the Hampton players are getting up underneath the, the Presbyterian offensive line? Presbyterian offensive line cannot let those guys get up underneath them and lift them up and stop their drive. Chakadira Suba, one of the safety stacking in there, made that tackle. And so now it's crunch time here for PC. Thought they had a touchdown. Myers stepped out of bounds. On third down, can they get it in? Jeter once again, flag down. He will not get there, but let's see the penalty marker. Leading defense the way, Robert Scott. Again. Offsides on defense, it looks like that's gonna take him a, another two feet closer. Yeah. Jeter really has a lot of push once he gets hit, but he's running into a wall up there today. I mean, the ball is at the one and a half, two foot line. I might take an athlete like Jeter and tell him to dive over. Jeter and Zola Davis come in on third and goal from the half yard line. Jeter to the left of Walker. Davis in the wing. Goes to Jeter again off the right side. He's upended. And Hampton holds firm. The Hampton defensive line is playing really, really good. They match up. Looks like the Presbyterian offensive line is overmatched with the, with the power, just the raw power of the Hampton defensive line. This is a win for Hampton, the way Presbyterian moved the foot, football down the field. First and goal from the two, and the Blue Hose could only get one. So here comes Gardner Duckworth, chip shot from 20 yards out. Again, just his second field goal attempt of the season. And it's good. Do you take your points off the board? You got another offside penalty on Hampton. Oh but my. you had lost, you had lost a yard, yard and a half on the previous play. So it's probably Yeah, and Jai C. L. Dell is points. declining it. Yep, it is decline. So it's 3-0 Blue Hose. Gardner Duckworth kicks it in from 20 yards out. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Big South Football on ESPN+. Welcome back to Bailey Memorial Stadium. Brett Williams and John Ork here with you. Thanks for being with us. Presbyterian up 3 to nothing over Hampton. A long drive to open play for the Blue Hose. First and goal at the 2, and they could not get in, however, so resorted to a Gardner-Duckworth 20-yard field goal to open scoring today. Drew Gilbert kicks things off as the Pirates look to bring it back with some space to operate on the move. And here he has a lot of space up to the 38-yard line. That is Ronald Bell bringing the things back for the Pirates, and he's shaking up on the end of it. 
Bell has got some quick moves there, I can tell you that. Not the player the Pirates want to see down. No. He brings a lot of explosion to this special teams unit and offense and leading receiver this season. Yeah, it's like he, he set. Brought that 36 yards back. You can see right here, uh, well, you missed it uh, earlier. He, he set a player up by going to the right and, and knew, knowing he was going to cut to the left. He, he faked out a Presbyterian player big time. We'll step aside for a moment as Ronald Bell is tended to 3 nothing PC here on ESPN+. Plus. Ronald Bell helped off the field by a pair of athletic trainers for Hampton. Didn't look good. It did not. We'll keep you posted on that. First look at the Pirates offense, Delman Williams under center. He flings it off to the outside. It's complete to Marcel Paul, making his second straight start. Gain of three to the 41. Nice crisp pass. Hit that ball had to get there in a hurry. He didn't have much time. Williams, a senior from Norfolk, Virginia, coming off a banner day was the first Hampton quarterback in 34 years with 300 passing yards and 100 yards on the ground last week against Lane. Second and seven, hands it off up the middle to Will Robinson, breaks a tackle off to the right side, fighting for the first down marker. He's going to get close, and I he think on it. the last effort he has it. Good effort. Yeah, he got it. I mean, he just drove through that tackler. It, when you're a tackler and you're going, and here they do, they're going to play the hurry-up game. When you're a tackler, you've got to get your head in front of, of, the, of the, the, the offensive player or he's going to drive right through you. First and 10 from the 48. Play action off to the outside. It's dropped. Well, Hampton's lucky they didn't get caught for a hold. On Fisher out there. Play materialized so quickly and finished the period. The referees didn't have much of a chance to make that call. So second down as the Pirates forced to slow down. Here comes a blitz. The rollout, Williams looking deep, overthrown and incomplete. Had a good touch on the ball. This wind just keeps changing directions. You know, I thought PC, the wind was blowing left to right. Now it's just blowing across the field. And uh, I thought PC was, took the wind in their face so they could get it in the second quarter. But uh, it's changing directions now. Just an added element to the atmosphere here today on what is otherwise a perfect Saturday. Finally, fall temperature starting to kick in. Hampton wanted a call. Now it will come. Saying that the PCD line got over and forced an offensive lineman to jump. Well, if the PC offensive defensive lineman is, is in the neutral zone, they, they call that a neutral zone infraction, which is exactly what happened. Yeah, they had to call it at that point, considering <laughs> that they didn't blow it dead for a jump right on the spot. So that Correct. was about the only possible penalty there. If if the PC player goes in the neutral zone and gets back and nobody moves, it's it's nil, it's zero. It doesn't mean a thing. A five-yard penalty brings up third and five. Pirates now just over into Blue Hose territory. Williams completes it. First down for Hampton. Moving forward, Byron Barney over the 35. Cody Campbell is sitting there with his hands out going like in amazement. He either got picked or uh, got pushed off. Pirates ready to rock and roll again. Play action off to the outside. Here's Barney once more. Trying to dodge a couple defenders, ends up picking up three yards down to the 32. He's quick. Barney, a senior from Columbia, Maryland, in his first year with Hampton after transferring from Sacred Heart. He's a grad transfer. 23 career appearances up Watch there. His moves. He's quick. And the other thing is that a lot of Presbyterians' team are freshmen. Indeed. Due to that scholarship change. Up the middle, here goes Will Robinson, charges forward for another Pirates first down, gain of eight. Will Robinson saw 98 yards last week in relief of Shai McKenzie, who is 
The normal number one back and hurt this week as well. Here goes Robinson again, 11 more yards. He is tearing it up in the early goings. The Hampton offensive line seems to be handling the Presbyterian defensive line also. They look bigger and stronger, which they are bigger. And it's going to force Presbyterian to try to slow things down as the Blue Hose use their first timeout with 4.20 to go here in quarter number one. Keep it here, go to break. Well, when, you, when, you're, when you're having success, the hurry, the, hur, the hurry up means a lot that you can, you can keep the defense on their heels. You know, the, I mean, the, the hurry up puts, puts the defense on the disadvantage. Uh, certainly a change of pace from Presbyterian's own first drive. Made up eight minutes and 25 seconds, one of the longest of the season. 13 plays, 66 yards. Visit BigSouthSports.com and stay current with everything in the Big South Conference. News, results, stats, standings, and much more. Check the GEICO Alumni Spotlight and enjoy video features profiling student athletes from across the conference. Remember, the source for all your conference information is BigSouthSports.com. Let's see if Hampton, if they ever get in a third and long, try that uh, hard count again. First and 10 from the 18. Pass is complete on the button hook. Alec Dana gets close to another first down, picks up eight yards to the five. Two and a half yards away. Keeps the whole playbook open when you're second and two and a half. The only thing that takes some of the things out of the playbook is that there's no depth of the because the end zone stops. PC couldn't get in first and goal from the two last time. Let's see if Hampton fares any differently. Fade route and knocked aside, no flags. Hampton one and one didn't get one. Marcel Paul, the intended receiver. It's a tough call when they're right, when they're right there with each other and you don't know if their feet tangled up, which you can see that they did. If their feet tangle up together, that's a no call. Rod Haygood on the coverage for Presbyterian making his fifth start in as many games this season. Hampton has run right side from the middle to the right side. Let's see if they go that way again. Oh, he moved. <laughs> he moved several yeah. yards upfield. Yeah, he, he took three steps. Maybe that uh, hard count didn't work out for him. That's Jabril Gee. Normally the left guard lined up on the right side of the offensive line this time. Well, Presbyterian had a linebacker stepped up in there. It looked like he was going to try to shoot the gap. Looks like they're going to go to a passing formation. That never doesn't mean anything that they will pass. Will Robinson still in the backfield, but all three receivers, Tommy's, well, check that, three of four receivers off to the left. Tommy Spangler faking, at least faking, if not showing a blitz here. Cody Campbell looks like he's coming, though. They will pass. PC will blitz. Another fade route back in the oh, end zone. Touchdown. Him. That Byron. defender just missed the ball. I mean, the ball was right on the money, but the defender was beat by a, a whole yard. That's that speed of Byron Barney as he found the open space past Trent Carrington, and the yeah. Pirates close out the drive with a touchdown. You can see it from right here. Carrington, he's been beat from the get-go there. He just misses the recovery. He almost caught back up with the ball, but to no avail. As Evan Lomax in to attempt the extra point. He is a perfect 16 for 16 on PATs this year. I think it's 17 for 17. So Hampton answers the long PC drive with just a two minute 41 second campaign. 11 plays, 62 yards and a score. It's seven to three Hampton over Presbyterian. Back here in just a moment to Clinton, South Carolina. This is Big South football on ESPN Plus. Tommy Spangler trying to rally the troops after the Pirates got down the field in a hurry. Not even three minutes, took him to go 62 yards for a score. Byron Barney from 11 yards out, catches it from Delman Williams and it's seven to three Hampton. First ever meeting between the Pirates and the Blue Hose proceeds their one year as big South foes in 2019. Kickoff muff, but then recovered by Deshaun Davis at the five. 
Around the 20, trying to cross the 25, ripped up and thrown out of bounds by Robert Prunty Jr., son of the head coach Robert Prunty in his first year at the helm of the Pirates. Nice to be able to coach your son like that. Presbyterian had very good success with the short passing game uh, in the first uh, drive they had. And, uh, you know, Hampton had more passes than runs, but they're a 50-50. When you look at their statistics, they are 50-50 right on. The, I mean, they're probably a half a percent different run pass. Well, John Walker will go back to work. Presbyterian again. At an eight minute and 25 second drive. And this one starts just as we saw three different times in the first drive with a Hampton offside penalty. The last one was declined on the good field goal, but nonetheless. That's three offsides on Hampton. Well, if you count the offensive one, that's, that's four. That's four. Yeah, and one on Presbyterian. So PC will start from its own 31. Ola Davis in the backfield. Play action. Walker the rollout. Over Cody Montgomery. Out to the wide out to Sean Davis. Hampton saying incomplete, but the referee says otherwise. Nine-yard catch close to another first down. I don't, they, were, they were over there juggling their hands, but it looked like he made a basket catch out of right in the stomach. You know, it's, it's hard to tell from this far away. It's on the opposite side of the field from us. PC going hurry up in case they want to do a review. <laughs> Too late. They got caught. Is under review. We'll finish that yeah. sentence. Yeah, we'll finish. <laughs> so we'll take a look at the replay as soon as we get a chance. And like I said, PC was trying to give Hampton a taste of its own medicine with the hurry up, but didn't get it done in time. Right. Well, when you when you're successful and you know that it could be a questionable call, and you're you're having success too, you just keep the pressure on the defense, and, and keep the pressure on the the officials. You know, don't don't let it up. Just keep going. The catch is indeed complete. It is still a perfect afternoon so far for Walker. Five for five for 62 yards if it stands. You know, players players are always trying to do a sales job. Oh, he, he you know, he held me ref, you know, or a pass interference. <laughs> so, but see, now that we've got replay so much now. Uh, they're going to say it does, in fact, stand. Yeah, it looks like a basket catch there. I mean. Kind of hard to tell yeah, from our angle. you couldn't tell from that angle. It has to be indisputable evidence. That was a pretty quick review, so and evidently it, it This is not like an SEC or the National Championship game where they have 25 cameras True. everywhere. So nine yards on that game brings up second and short. Does PC take a shot right here? Good opportunity to do so on second and one. Instead, they'll hand it off to Zola Davis. They'll have the first down and more up to the 50. Gain of 10 on the play, first big run the Blue Hose have pulled off so far. Good run that time. Davis looked like he stayed back and looked for a hole right there. Good block, good down block. I'm not so sure, it looked like the right guard. I couldn't, couldn't tell for sure. That would be Crosby. Motion comes to Sean Davis. Ball sitting right at midfield. Walker back to pass. Slips out of pressure. Goes deep. Wide open. Dante Myers. Myers. And this time he'll find the end zone. Touchdown Presbyterian. That was a great call by Coach Ork, the offensive coordinator that time. Something, either that was blown coverage or just a great call that they, where they picked up on a, on a scheme that uh, Hampton wasn't doing. Let's see if we can find out what happened on that sideline. That's the major mix up on the near side. Yeah, they had three three defenders on, on, on one wide out down there, and Myers just got scot free. And the funny thing about it was is that the other receiver that the defenders were coming after pointed down the field to say, there he is. A little late on that as a flag flies again. This time it's against PC. So it'll make Gardner Duckworth's job just a bit harder. The 
is six for seven on PATs this season. First touchdown of the year for Dante Myers. Myers having a really good game. Lots of his career too. Cool. Freshman out of Duluth, Georgia, already making an impact. 78 yards now on the day. And it's good. A 50-yard strike from Walker to Myers, and the Duckworth extra point puts the Blue Hose back on top, 10 to seven, here late in the first. And you have a feeling, John, when the game was quickly back in Hampton's favor, that something like that is exactly what the Blue Hose needed to That's swing exactly the momentum get, on their get side. Get the momentum back. You know, it's it's setting up so far to be a shootout here today. You know. Great news, Big South fans. Big South alumni could save even more on GEICO car insurance with a special discount. Visit GEICO.com slash Big South for a free quote today. CFPC can uh, corral the return team for uh, Hampton. They had a 37-yard return in the last kickoff. Well, that was Ronald Bell who was shaken up while being tackled on said kickoff. Antonio Graham back to return this one for the Blue Hose. And he actually seeds the way Byron. for Byron Barney, who takes it up to the 24-yard line, return of about 20 yards on the play. And that's where the Pirates will start their second possession. You have to run down the field under control when you're covering kicks because everybody else should be in their lanes and you can't have somebody break through your area. There's not too many people behind you, and one of them is the kicker. Ball spotted at the 23. Delman Williams back to work. The Pirates offense. First play, a handoff to Will Robinson around the left edge. Cross the 30. He explodes for another first down run. 13 on the play for Will Robinson as he has been able to strike some serious chunk plays out of the backfield. Yeah, number seven, Yell Dell right there. Oh, he he's complaining that he got held. That's, that's exactly where they went around. Hurry up again. Williams with he's, a ton of time in the pocket. Right now there. flushed, breaks the potential tackle from Yell Dell, and then out to the 40 where he's wrapped up and thrown out of bounds by Jarrett Nagy. Four yard scramble for number four. Messiah Rice is 6'5", 310, senior going against Yell Dell on that left side. They're using his, his size, and he's a good blocker. And another FBS transfer, Messiah Rice from East Carolina. This one doesn't go anywhere as Chad Stevens makes the tackle on Robinson, gain of two. You want your, you want your DBs, your defensive backs to be able to sit, to sit back there and make sure it's a run before they come up. But when they come up, they need to come up with authority. And that's what he did. Check that no gain on the play. So it's third down and seven from the 39. They're trying that hard count. It looked like it worked in the first quarter, uh, earlier in the first drive. Nearly worked again, but not quite. So the Pirates slow it back down. Williams in trouble. Now He's escapes the pocket, has room to run. He has the first down. Out of bounds at the 49. The defensive end cannot let the quarterback, the quarterback get outside of him. That's, that's their rule. He got inside that time. You can see right there. They ran a stunt, left the tackle out there, which is the bigger, heavier guy who just can't keep up with the quarterback speed. The, the quarterback for Hampton is Williams is the second leading rusher on the team. Had a career high 115 yards on the ground last week. This goes to Rayshot Harriet who stays in bounds, has the first down, keeps on pushing all the way down to the 29. Trent Carrington eventually brings him down, but there is a flag way back at the 49 yeah, right. of Hampton. And this one appears There's to be coming back. right there. Yeah, you can see it right there, but that was one heck of a run. And uh, Presbyterian PC did not, they tried an arm tackle on him way back at, at very first contact, 
at the line of scrimmage. That's about the fifth or sixth penalty for Hampton right there. You said they had a lot of penalties. That is indeed the fifth. It'll perhaps be the most costly. That's the 10 yard penalty to send them all the way back to their own 39 when they had the ball at the PC 31. That's a major, major difference. That's 30 yards. So first and 20 from there. Harriet back in the backfield. Williams freezes the defender, now finds Harriet out to the left side. And he is slammed down, much to the adulation of all the fans here. He, he got hammered on that one. He got hit high and low. The PC defense is not given up. You could see how Yeldell kept the quarterback for uh, Williams for Hampton hemmed in there and he had to get rid of the ball. And with it, the first quarter comes to an end. Big hit fires up the fans here at Bailey Memorial Stadium as their Blue Hoes lead the Hampton Pirates 10 to seven. We'll step aside when we come back the second quarter of this Big South football matchup on ESPN+. Plus. Hampton Pirate football at the, their own 41-yard line as we begin the second quarter. Presbyterian leading the visiting Pirates 10-7 here from Bailey Memorial Stadium in Clinton, South Carolina. Alongside John Ork, I'm Brett Williams. Appreciate you being along with us on a picture-perfect fall afternoon in the Palmetto State. Play action, Delman Williams looking it off to the right side. It's complete. Cross midfield to the 48-yard line. Lorenzo Thompson with his first reception of the day. That'll make it second down and eight, 12 yard gain, excuse me, third, third and eight. 12 yard gain on second and 20 following the holding penalty. PC defense has given them plenty of cushion because of those deep throws. You can't give them but seven yards here. Williams seven for 10, 49 yards and a touchdown so far. Flag flies, false start coming against Hampton. PC faked, an, faked another blitz there, and uh, I think their wide receiver moved. So now it's uh, third and 12. Six penalties against Hampton, two false starts, three offsides, and the holding. Are they racking up again? Williams Good with plenty pocket. of time. There's Flag comes hold, again. Like. Just trying to extend. This one's incomplete. Check it, most likely is fourth down either way here. Hampton's got a big offensive line. And they look like they can sit there and hold people out. That is holding once again on Albert Carlisle. This one declined. And the Pirates will be forced to punt. Get to see Deshaun Davis again on the return. Uh, we mentioned his ability to return it on kicks. He can do the same on punts. He's, he's due to break, to break one. He's pretty fearless back there, too. The all-time Presbyterian D1-era record holder with 240 career punt return yards. Ivan Oraha, the transfer from Eastern Michigan. Sends it up to the 11 where Davis grabs it. Tries to slip a couple defenders and he is railed at the 14. Big hit by Robert Scott, the fourth. Jason Davidson also in to stop Davis. He had already left on the left side of the field that, that defender and thought he was gonna make some moves on the right hand guy. The defender didn't give up though. Scott didn't give up and uh, he just went over and crushed him. Well, Davis awaits his next chance, staying in on offense. Got right back up, didn't he? He's a tough kid. That's Tommy Spangler said one of the most loyal and bought in guys here at Presbyterian in his senior year. Walker goes right to Deshaun Davis, quick out route, gained yardage, 
almost up to a first down and said they're going to mark him that he stepped out of bounds at the 21. Still a gain of eight. Good short passing game by PC. They've, they've got uh, Hampton on their heels when it comes to the short passing game. They just can't run against them. They had nine rushes for only 17 yards, less than two yards a carry in the first quarter. Not what they're typically used to for Zola Davis and Jarius Jeter combining. You're right there. Two fifth and sixth in the conference, respectively, in yards per game. Keith Pearson out of the slot, There's breaks one man, gets miss. up close to a first down, and looks like he'll get it. Right on. Darian right Carr on, on the stop. PC's got a very inexperienced offensive line, and if you're playing against some of the, uh, some seniors and stuff uh, on Hamptons, it's just uh, it makes it makes a big difference. They got a, a redshirt sophomore, redshirt junior, redshirt junior, which are really actually seniors and a true junior. So, just something to have to fight through. And off goes to Davis as he fights his way for three yards up to the 30, excuse me, the 27. Three yards is good against this Hampton defense the way they, uh, they've been handling the Presbyterian offensive line. Davis averaging three and a half per carry today. Really is a thunder and lightning combo with him and Jeter. Coming into today, 63 carries for Davis, 55 for Jeter and just two yards on the season separating the two totals. Keith Pearson goes in motion left to right on second and seven. Walker now airing it out for Davis, complete again, first down PC, up to the 36 yard line, gain of seven. That was, that was almost targeting uh, by number one, the, the, the safety for Hampton. If you see he launched Bluehos tried to hurry up. Zola Davis upended in the backfield. Uh, he lost a yard. Kentrell Groom making that tackle. Second time he's blown up the line. The other time was on that yeah, last think, surge on third think, and goal. I think PC would be well served getting five yards with a short pass on first down, then going to the run play on second down. Because they're not having much. They get behind the eight ball a little bit, even though they've been successful with the passing play on first down. Second and 11 here from the 35. Out to the outside, Keith Pearson, around one defender. Across midfield, Keith Pearson turning up yardage into the Pirates' territory go the Blue Hopes. He's not jitterbuggery. He's just smooth. When he makes those cuts and puts that foot in the ground, he is smooth. Watch that right there, another cut. He's just fluid when he makes those. That's what Tony Dorsett was. He was a fluid runner. Head coach Tommy Spangler had a lot of praise for Keith Pearson this week. Said if he was just a bit bigger, he's 5'9", 175. He was just a bit bigger. He'd probably be wearing orange and purple, red and black, or garnet and black, quote from Spangler. But he's certainly happy to have him in blue and garnet here. Yes, yes we are. That's Jarius Jeter right there, pounding off left side for nine yards there. One of the better running plays that PC has had. Right here he makes that cut, makes a man miss. And there's his power play again, getting all those yards after contact. And he just dragged Chance Herbert for a few more yards. Second and one, Jeter's first big run of the day. Gets it again, now in trouble. And brought down yeah, hard in the backfield. He lost two that time because the offensive line got blown up. That Hampton defensive line is, is really taking it to the offensive line of Presbyterian. They're not getting much push there. That's why the pass, the quick passing game outside is working. Loss of three on that play with the tackle from Roman Bond. Bring it back to the 42. Quarterback keeper. This was actually a direct snap to Keith Pearson. Line up from the Wildcat, and it does not work. 
Interesting play call on third down there. Yeah, it was. Just a change of pace. Looks like PC's going to punt the ball away. Play field position game. So the drive stalls. It was second and one from the 39. Now the next two plays saw a net, net a loss of three. Tried to go back with what the PC calls truck back to the left side again, and it got blown up. Bolin kicks it away, takes a good blue hose bounce. That'll go all the way down to the three. Nice, nice job by Myers getting the gunner down there, the gunner on the left-hand side. Got down there and stopped the ball. So the Pirates pin deep in their own territory when we return. It's 10-7 Presbyterian early second quarter. Big South football on ESPN+. Plus. Big Ten on ESPN+. Plus. 8.32 to go here in the second quarter. 10-7 Presbyterian leads Hampton. These two teams will be in the Big South together for one season next year. Hampton joining the conference full-time. Presbyterian in its final year in 2019 before going on scholarship. Delman Williams in trouble in the backfield, but he breaks it and gets. He was in trouble, and he just cut up and just, I mean, he just looked like he went up in there and hit. Again, ran for 115 yards last week, a career high, and a blowout victory over Lane College. That was his third carry of the day, good for 23 yards. Second and short upcoming, handoff. Got to wrap him up. Another missed tackle for PC leads Will Eason. Third, the third tackler got there, J.C. L. Dell from the defensive end position because the first two missed him. Hurry up again. And the handoff goes to Will Eason once more, picks up four yards, nearly five, up to the 24. PC can't give up that many yards on first down. Four yards is what every offense wants. If they can get four, more than four yards, they're very happy. The flag comes down, and Hampton's probably glad that it did, considering wow. it just went <laughs> yeah, straight I was through the say, wickets. That, uh, he snapped the ball, trying to go fast. The big right tackle. That uh, was uh, number well, 71. Yeah, Malik Mackey. Yeah. 6 7 3 15. Is that all? <laughs> He's a <laughs> giant out there. Third team all MEAC selection in 2017. That was Hampton's conference for a very long time. Williams with time, holding again in the backfield. Most likely the flag is down there. Byron Barney, the reception, but we'll see what the call is. It is a hold. Well, the Hampton better get used to this this style of play because that might work in the MEAC, but when you get when you get to the Big South, the officials are, are a lot of these officials uh, they call ACC games and other games and stuff like that. So uh, they're gonna they're gonna catch that hold often. That has got to be the seventh penalty on Hampton. I believe it's the eighth. Eighth, okay, sorry, I lost count in the midst. Yeah. Of the They're putting themselves in a hole, second and 20 now. Williams oh, wow. trying to take it himself, he'll get nowhere. Knocked down hard in the backfield by Chad Stevens. 54, Chad, big Chad Stevens. And the Pirates going considerably in the wrong direction here. Taking Chad out now, putting in a little bit more of a fast rush. Quicker, quicker defensive end here. Colby Campbell firing up the Blue Host fans for third and 22. And it looks like Robert Prunty wants to take a timeout. First time out of the half for Hampton. Each team now with two remaining. Aaron Buick is in for Chad Stevens. I love that name, Aaron Buick. Great name for a defensive lineman. Uh, 
Join the conversation and get social with the Big South. Learn new details about what's going on or share your own experiences as you join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and more. Plus, find and follow the conference source for game updates and championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. A quick timeout as Prunty tries to dial something up on third and long. What do you go with here, John? You better get something that's got to either get, get you a short pass of 10 or 12 yards and try to get some uh, yards after catch, or you better get something deep. They've been They're able to deep. work in space. They're going deep. This one's a troublesome pass. Intended for Marcel Paul, and on the coverage, Rod Haygood. And the Blue Hose defense is loving its performance on that possession. And Marcel Paul is 6'2", it looks like he could jump. And they tried to throw it up high so he could get it, but he was only going to get 14, 15 yards out of that. He was covered pretty good. And Rod Haygood has done a nice job on man-to-man -man so far today. See what Davis can do on a punt return here for PC. He's setting up at the 44-yard line of Hampton as Ivan Orajas pinned back and nearly on the back line. PC went for the block. He's going to have to fair catch it to 50. That's an excellent punt from Oraja back Davis all the way up. Hung up in the air for over 55 yards. Let me ask you a question. Is that the PC 50, is that the PC 50 or the Hampton 50? <laughs> Depends on whether you're a half full or half empty kind of guy. Yeah, that's a story around PC here that uh, one of the players are helping the coaches keep the books. He was injured one day and he was trying to give them situational downs and distance. And uh, he said, uh, he said the 50 yard line, third and 10. He said, whose 50 was it? He goes, I don't know, coach. <laughs> Just got to put him through the ringer a little bit yeah, every now and then, right? Did. Well, for me, there's 50, depending on how you look at it. PC has the ball. And to hand off to Jarius Jeter, who waits for the hole and then bursts through it. Gain of 13 on the play to the Hampton 37. Good patience. Good patience by Jeter that time. I think they've been, there's that truck play I was talking about. He just waited for it to develop. I think they've been getting there a little early because Hampton is, is quick and strong. And as the game has gone on, the Blue Hose's tempo has picked up. Trying to fight fire with fire, I guess. Good time. Over the middle, it oh, is caught. Is Keith Pearson that. to the end zone, touchdown Blue Hose. He's got that off his shoestrings, it looked like. He stopped and had to catch the ball around his knees or ankles. And that was a great catch by Pearson. What athletic ability. Watch, watch this on the replay. And a, just a great pocket by the, that kept the back end. Look at that pocket by PC. All kinds of time. Yeah. And once again, a PC receiver found his way behind the Hampton secondary. So there's the PAT attempt for Gardner Duckworth. Converted his first earlier. And it's good. 36 yard score from Walker to Pearson. And now Presbyterian has a 10-point lead over Hampton, 17-7 the score, with just over five to go in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. You are watching the BSN on ESPN+. Plus. Well, Zombie Nation welcoming you back to Clinton, South Carolina. As Tommy Spangler prowls the sideline. His team leading by its biggest margin of the day, 17-7 Blue Hose over the visiting Pirates. As Drew Gilbert set to kick it off once more. Antonio Graham and Byron Barney back to return it. Barney gets it at the two. Works his way up to the 20. Tries to cut it back to the right side. Can't get much further. The return of 21, Rod Haygood in on the tackle. The Hampton players are still breaking tackles, and Pete C is going to have to make, be tackling better because if they break one on a kickoff return or a punt return or a, a reception, they can take it to the house. They've got some speed on Hampton's team. You know, a lot just, of transfers from other schools, too. I'm, I'm amazed at the number of transfers. Yeah, 15 FBS transfers this year from, to name a few, East Carolina, Cincinnati, Oklahoma, all finding their way to Hampton, Virginia this year. 
Back to work go the Pirates. Will Robinson around the left edge. Another broken tackle. He keeps on pushing. Yeah, and that's a, not typical of Jaiciel Dell. He is one of the better defenders for PC. You don't, a defensive end cannot go head to head with the running back and let the running back get, get past him, especially when he's got his hands on him. Robinson up to 47 yards. Now he's got a whole lot more. First down up to the 40. Bursts forward for eight more. Hampton's got plenty of time. There's five minutes left in the half. They got 60 yards to go here. Tons of time. Get and, back in this game. And the Pirates will also receive the second half kickoff, so a chance to go two for one. Flings it out to the outside. Good play by the defensive uh, backfield of Presbyterian that time. They took the blocks on and shed them. Dirk Curtin blows it up this time. Just kind of stayed home and waited for yeah, the tackle. That was a that was a home that was a, a host of Presbyterian players that time. Looks like they're going for a blitz here. And off the race shot, Harriet. And he's flipped by Tyler Wilhelm at the 45. You, when you run a blitz, a two-man blitz, you go with a normal four-man down lineman. You got six up there, and you get a run and play that gets through that first wave. Those are the kind that go all the way. So PCs with Tommy Spangler has been pretty good at running blitzes. Third and five that time. there. And it's incomplete. Colby Campbell in on some close coverage of Byron Barney. He comes up screaming for a flag, but no, he, Campbell he, wants he, none he, of it. That was. I don't think there was enough contact there. No, he was he was in the in the play. That was uh, Marquise and Abinet. PC went after the last punt. Let's see if they go after it again or try to set Deshaun Davis up for a return. You traditionally will try to return the ball along your sidelines. Here's a return. Davis retreating to his own 13. Now works his way backward again. Can he turn it around? And he gets up to the 16, three yards on the return. And the Blue Holes will set up from there. 3.38 to go in the second. PC by 10. Back to Clinton in just a moment. The playoff spot on the line. A very lucky stupid old chair. offense back to work first and 10 from their own 17 yard line leading 17 to 7 and trying to strike late in the first half John Walker screen pass outside to Keith Pearson he gets nowhere in fact he's going backward in a hurry Donald Smith wrapped him up just like that the other uh, Creighton Buchanan missed his block out there he didn't get anything hardly at all just a little chip on the defender and he just blew right past him. PC needs to get at least one first down to run this clock out to keep Hampton off, off the field, their offense off the field. Again, the Pirates will get the kickoff in the second half after deferring the opening coin toss. Second down and 13 after the Showing loss of blitz. three. Hand off to Jarius Jeter around the left edge, ran into his own man. Let's see if Hampton calls a timeout here to try to conserve the clock. Doesn't look like it. It would look like something. Harmony Burden brought him to the ground. If, if PC's smart, they'll run 30 seconds off this clock before they run this play. They've had a lot of success. Looks like that's what they're doing. They've had a lot of success. They might even call their own timeout. No, they're going to do it. But with a short pass and trying to get, if they can get a pass and stay in bounds, they'll run this clock down. And now, now Hampton, Hampton calls Hampton the timeout. Hampton woke, woke up on that one. Well, that they play clock was down to three, so yeah. I'm not real sure why they didn't just let the Blue Hose run that last yeah, play. I, I agree with you and save those timeouts for their offense. Well, the Pirates cost themselves about 25 seconds out of that. At least. At least they, they should have called the timeout immediately after uh, the last play that uh, PC was backed up on, and they, they would have had close to 245 left 
Well, the Blue Hose had a number of extra receivers in on that play. Let's see what they come out with. They're gonna try to get some extra yardage here. One running back, Jarius Jeter, in there. That's Pearson, Buchanan, and Myers out wide to the right. So looking to throw to Desha Deshaun Davis on the left. <laughs> That's called bait. Yes, indeed. But he's got, he's he's almost double covered over here. Unless they run a blitz with the safety. They're showing Davis a lot of respect. They've only got three three co three men coverage on three receivers over there. Now they back into it. Third and 14, flare out of the backfield, caught by Jeter. He gets oh, back did. to the 10. See, that and Norman was the Oglesby. worst thing Jeter could have done is run out of bounds for, for Presbyterian. That play took eight seconds. And credit to Norman Oglesby for really forcing him further toward the sideline. Well, I'm not sure yeah. he was. The whole thing was the pass was off, so Jeter should have went down those three yards, and he, he slapped the ball like I know I should have been down. They must have counted him down. They're running the clock now. Well, it ended up working out for the Blue Hose after all, but right. Hampton still should start with strong field position, position rather, following the punt from Jackson Boland. Low snap. He does get it away, but it's a wobbler. Received at the 48-yard oh, line of Hampton. Got, oh, all kinds flags. of flags down. Boy, Hampton is. They're going to get. They might get their 10 penalties the first half here. Yep, up to number nine. That was eight on Johnson on the return. If this is on them, it's hard. To, I mean, it's not hard to tell that on a punt return. It's probably holding. That's a spot foul from blocking the back. Zion Edmonds charged with that block in the back. Still decent field position for Hampton, but not nearly as good as the Pirates would have wanted there. PC's uh, coming with some uh, the smaller defensive line to get a little bit better pass rush. They think Williams is going to be throwing the ball down the field. You don't want to drop back too far because Williams is going to run that quarterback draw on you. He's very uh, capable. Williams with time. Over the middle complete. On the outside. Good job, you got out of bounds, six yard gain. And not having to use their last timeout. You gotta use the sideline when you're on offense trying to eat, trying to conserve your time. Antonio Graham with that reception picked up six. So second and four. Now the handoff. Here goes Will Robinson around the right side. Crosses the PC 40. Get cured and pushed him out, but he got out of bounds, got the first down, you automatically stopped the clock on first down. Pretty good call by Hampton. Just trying to manage the clock and get first downs. 15 yard run for Will Robinson. Now tries to plunge with it again, only gets a couple before Jarrett Nagy and Jicey Yeldell combine to bring him down. See, now they're substituting. Presbyterian should actually substitute a player in now, right now, and make them wait. The officials will make them wait, but they didn't do that. And now the Pirates rock and roll on second and eight. Williams in trouble, lets it go. Downfield, it is oh. incomplete. Looked like Curitan had stepped in front of that that time and one-handed it, and the, def the receiver actually wound up playing defense. If we get a good replay here, the, there's a good, should be a good camera angle right there from the end zone. Let's see what happens right here. Right there, he covers it. And the, you, you see yep. he had, he had taken two steps, almost two steps with it, but never had total control. Alec Dana, the receiver there, turned cornerback. So third and eight now for the Pirates. It'll be a 55-yard field goal from there. Evan Lomax's career long is 46. This one's complete. It'll be a first down. Byron Barney to the 25. It looks like, no, they stopped the clock. He got him out. It's hard to see in front of the PC players there whether they 
the receiver went out of bounds or not. But he got just enough to get that first down, give them an, another four four plays here, but they've only got 28 seconds, 27 now, counting down. Play action, outside Barney again. Cuts up field to the 20, fights his way to the sideline, and he'll get out of bounds to stop the bounds. clock. 20 seconds left. Still got time for about three or four more plays. And still one timeout to work with. Now comfortably in field goal range, but not yet satisfied. Can't be when you got three or four plays left and you're this close. Pump fake. Going for it all. Antonio Graham, the intended target, but it's well out of play. Whoa. He hit that track and uh, slipped with his cleats on that track. The ball was way overthrown, though. Quarterback had to, Williams had to release it early, though, to get it there. You know, now they're down to 14 seconds. That play took uh, six seconds right there. I'd say they've got two plays left unless they just do a really quick sideline pass there. It's third down, they got two shots at the end zone. So they might take an end zone shot here. They really like that fade route, and in fact, the last time it didn't work, they went right yeah, back, to, back it. to the other side. There's now Williams blitz. in trouble, and he's brought down. Yes. Jicey Yeldell and Jarrett Nagy in the backfield to blow it up. And although Hampton will use its final timeout here, that makes the task of kicker Evan Lomax a whole lot harder. Gil Dell has a motor that just won't stop, though. He has been fighting all day long to get in there and get that blitz. He didn't get the blitz, but he gave it to Nagy. He caused it. Fourth sack of the season for Yel Dell. All the way back to the 30 it goes. That'd be a 47-yarder ballpark. Indeed, and again, that would be a career high for Lomax. And it's fourth down. What does Hampton do? Do they do they try do they try to get three here and make it a one-score game, or do they throw it a ball to the end zone? I think you have to. And here comes the I kicking think, unit. Uh, yeah. I think you have to at this point. With you know, you're gonna get the ball to start, but yeah, it take take the points if you have a chance to take the points. Yeah. Now, if you're you're Presbyterian, what you do is you play kick safe. You, you, you play your normal defense. Now they're going to call timeout. And uh, see what uh, they wanted to see what Hampton was going to do before they called the timeout or put the right team in there. Now Lomax is staying on the field during this timeout. So doesn't appear Hampton's going to change plans. Well, you still got to play safe here because if this is his career high, he's never kicked one this far, you question, is he really going to kick it? So PC should play uh, kick safe here, but they've got to cover all these, uh, these outside receivers. From about 48 yards. It's down, Lomax Whoops. with distance, but well wide to the right. Good stop by the Presbyterian defense. That sack really turned things around right there on third down. Really made his task a lot harder. Would have been yelled, about yelled 10 Dale, yards closer. Yeah, yelled Dale's gotta be, gotta be tired. He's going up against a 6'7", 315 pound offensive tackle over there and I've, I've been watching it all day, and that's a battle. You know, I think, I think, I don't think he's winning the battle. He did that play, but I don't think he's winning the overall battle. But I think he's winning where he's getting holds and stuff and penalties against Hampton, just because he is so aggressive. I think it's been getting a little bit better for PC in the trenches as this game has gone on. Still advantage Pirates, but the Blue Hoes have the advantage in the game. As Walker takes a knee, the Blue Hose lead at 17 to seven. Halfway home here in Clinton, South Carolina. The Geico Halftime Report comes your way in just a moment. This is Big South Football on the BSN on ESPN Plus. Big two breakfast sliders for $2.99. Welcome back to the Geico Halftime Report. 
The Big South would like to thank Geico, a contributing partner to the BSN on ESPN+. I'm Brett Williams alongside John Ork. We're here with you as Presbyterian leads Hampton 17-7 at the break. And John, Hampton really looked like it was starting to assert control with that first drive, came right down, hurry up, winning the battle in the trenches on both sides, and then everything changed really on that 50-yard touchdown pass from John Walker to Dante Myers, opened up things for the Blue Hose ever since. Yes, it did. I mean, PC just had a uh, – just changed their mindset. They went after went after their more aggressive throwing the ball, and they said, well, man, we can, we can get these guys if we throw the ball. We weren't running against them. They started throwing the ball. Then they gashed him for a couple 10, 12-yard plays, one one by Davis, one by Jeter, you know, and uh, they got back into the game and actually have now pulled away just a little bit, but not enough to, you know, sit back and rest. But uh, they've got to do the same thing. They've got 218 yards, which is really good for a first half of football. Yeah, Jeter and Davis have combined for just 39 yards. John Walker, however, a perfect 13 for 13 for 180 yards and two touchdowns in the first. We'll step aside, be back with more of the Geico Halftime Report right after this. Again. There can only be one champion. Presbyterian leads Hampton 17 to 7 at the break. And Mar Marriott is the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. For the best rates, book directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott, and you will support Big South student athletes in the process. That's BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. And for the latest updates in new look Big South merchandise, visit BigSouthStore.com now. Once there, you'll be able to gear up with an outstanding variety of officially licensed apparel in conference and school branded items. So get fully equipped for all your game day fun with the bigger and better online offerings at BigSouthStore.com. Let's take a look at the highlights of the first half. Hampton got it started again on that touchdown drive, second possession of the game. Will Robinson, who had 79 yards in the first half, seemed to just get chunk play after chunk play, and that set up the Byron Barney 11-yard score. Delman Williams going to the fade route for the second time on that drive, I believe, in consecutive throws, in fact. And the second one converted as Evan Lomax finished it off. 7-3 Hampton at that point late in the first quarter. But PC would answer Zola Davis with that first big gain of his day, as we mentioned. And then this was the play we talked about that changed it all wide open, Dante Myers. Couldn't ask for anybody wider open. First touchdown of his career. Gardner Duckworth made it 10 to 7 PC. And the Blue Hose would keep it going from there. Back on the Hampton offensive side, Delman Williams scrambled for 11 yards on this play. And his, his legs haven't really been a huge factor here, John, but they can be. They can be. They're, they're really good. This is uh, Jeter cranking off about a 14 yard run there. This looks like the pass where Pearson catches the touchdown. Yeah, a little shoestring yeah. grab from Pearson. His second touchdown of the season. And that got us to our current score of 17-7. Hampton had a late chance to try to get some points. But Alec Dana, their wide receiver, had to turn defensive to stop an interception from Dirk Curitan. Dirk Curitan had that ball, and he did have to knock it out to show he didn't have full possession. And then, Curitan would just fell down right there. There's the sack yep. by Nagy. Huge sack from Yeldell Yeldell, and Nagy. Yeah. And that put it into a deep field goal chance. That was missed. So it's 17 to 7 Blue Hose. This has been the Geico Halftime Report. Second half coming your way next. The Geico Halftime Report rolls on here at Bailey Memorial Stadium in Clinton, South Carolina, where Presbyterian leads Hampton 17-7 at the break. And, John, taking a look now at the Hampton stats, Delman Williams 11 for 19 for 75 yards and a score again. It hasn't been after last week's banner game for him with uh, over 300 yards passing, over 100 yards on the ground. It hasn't been him doing a lot of the work. We should mention, too, Ronald Bell injured on the first kickoff return. He's missing his biggest weapon outside, so they're turning a lot more to the run game. Right. They're going to have to, but they are not with their number one running back, uh, Shea McKenzie. That's also or true. Even their, or Anderson, their second running back. So a lot and, of different uh, uh, you know, 
But, they, they were, you know, Robinson is really doing a good job for them there. I mean, and Williams, Williams has got – they're fast. If, if they would stay disciplined – and without the penalties, I know that the penalties have stopped two or three of their drives. I'm going to say three drives for the simple reason. It took them out of field goal range, the last penalty they got. So uh, they're going to have to basically and, – and their penalties are, are – a lot of them are self-induced. The holding penalties, I understand, you know, you got somebody like Yeldell, who's, who's a good defensive end, you know, second team all conference. He's going to put pressure on you. But they have got to quit holding – and because they've gotten three holding calls at least and uh, those are big penalties and those are drive stoppers especially if you get them on a third first or a third down you know they uh they're just they, they crush and then i mean there's actually a category by how many first downs you get by penalty you know and so if a defense gets penalties that's actually a category yep. so i mean they've got to they got to get more self-discipline pc has got to get tougher on the offensive line and, and defensive line a little bit. Not so much defensive line, but they got to tackle better. PC has not been tackling. They're getting a lot of, you know, there's things that Yak, is, YAC is called yards after catch, but these are, they're getting yards after contact, and PC has got to stop that, and they've got to get some drive out of their offensive line. Those are the two things I see that PC's got to do. Their pass, PC's passing game is really good. I mean, Walker, Walker's stats are, are what? He's uh, perfect 13 on the day. for 13. I was going to say, did he even, has he even missed one yet? Now, this is a kid who, who got injured last week on his throwing shoulder. Didn't even play the second yeah. half and a little bit of the second yeah. quarter of that yeah. game last week. And, you know, so, I mean, that shows you what kind of desire he's got to be back on the field. I mean, 13 of 13 for 180 yards. I mean, I'd hate to see – I don't know what his quarterback rating is, but I know it's got to be approaching 200. No, it, you know. It's actually 267, 267. right now. So <laughs> <laughs> he's blowing it up at home yeah. here. So uh, that's that's excellent. So if PC continues to pass the ball, to pass the ball as well as they do and, uh, and uh, play a little bit better defense, they should win this game. Those are your keys to the second half here. Presbyterian leading Hampton 17-7. And what, as we expected, is a compelling matchup between these two future Big South opponents. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. This is Big South football on ESPN+. Plus. We work for them. QuickBooks, backing you. I'm Brett Williams alongside John Orr. Glad to have you along for the second half of this tilt between Presbyterian College and Hampton University. The Blue Hose leading the Pirates 17 to seven as we get ready for the third quarter. PC coming out once again in the blue with the white pants and the white helmets as Drew Gilbert sets to kick it off. Pirates wearing the white with the blue pants and the silver helmets, similar colors just flipped a little bit here today. Bombs away for Gilbert. As taken by Byron Barney back at the one. Tries to get it across the 20, runs into some trouble. And then he's dropped in the form of a Kwanzi Bethay doing work on special teams. Again, Byron Barney coming in to help the return game following the injury to the main returner and also the number one receiver, Ronald Bell, who was shaken up on his first touch of the game as he was tackled, returning a kick for 37 yards. That was actually a big break for PC because Bell looked, I mean, he looked very quick uh, and he would very uh, very much so help them on returns and this receiving team. And 674 yards receiving last year as they go back to the ground to Will Robinson. Picks up some more chunk yardage, about five on the play before he's run out of bounds. Ronald Bell also was the leading receiver coming in, 288 yards, three touchdowns, just about 57 yards per game on the season as well. As we mentioned before, Shai McKenzie and Devin Anderson also unavailable today, so it's back to Will Robinson, and he is taking over the bell cow roll beautifully. Well, looks looks like uh, they Hampton has decided, hey, we're going to run this ball, and we're going to run it until you stop us, and th they will. I mean, th that's what a team does. If they're successful, those look like back-to-back -back exact same plays. Up to the 35. They won't make it three. It's play action and swung out to the outside, Drop dropped. The ball. Incomplete. That is officially incomplete. 
intended for Jordan Ray. When you're picking up five to eight yards of carry, though, you can take a, take a chance and throw a quick little hitter just try to keep the defense off balance. Check that Marcel Paul dropped that one. Now the handoff comes to Ray Shot Harriet. Around the left edge, up to the 40. A game of about five will bring up third and five from there. This will be a big play for the PC defense to see if they can stop. I mean, it looks like Hampton's leaning on, on, on them pretty good here. It's a long five, five almost six. Will Eason rather on that last carry. There's a blitz. Williams with time now He's steps up. Oh, they they emptied the they emptied the linebacker zone. They got nothing but DBs back there. They ran they blitzed both linebackers in, and they got blocked outside. There was nothing up the middle. That's a thirty almost a thirty yard gain by Williams right up the middle. And it just started once again when he had the time in the pocket to work as Hampton slowed down by a nicked up Chad Stevens down on one knee back in pirate territory. But that'll happen too if you can close out the guys coming at you and suddenly open the right. door for a runner like that. It's the opposite of a, of a pocket, the passing pocket. You just put everybody to the outside, but when, when you don't leave a linebacker at home or a sheet of safety up, to, uh, to spy the quarterback. You don't even have to spy the quarterback. Somebody's got to be responsible. Somebody's got to be responsible for the middle section of the field. There he is right there. I mean, Cody Campbell was way off to the side there. I'll have a look at Chad Stevens. Certainly appears with the naked eye, not too much the worse for wear. BC certainly hopes that is the case. 34 yards on the carry for Delman Williams up to the PC 28 yard line. Now the swing pass is knocked aside. That did appear to be a barely forward pass, so incomplete. Michael Fisher. Fisher fighting through the, uh, the blocker over there trying to get in, make the tackle and the receiver just dropped that one. Fisher did not play either of the last two games, but overall has appeared in 23 of his last 26. And off to Robinson, cuts it up the field again. Inside the 20, staying on his feet and somersaults near a Pirate first down. Let's see where, they're, they're, where they spot it. I'll say... You know, they're running behind Rice consistently over there. That left side of the line, they are just crushing the PC's uh, right defensive line, line. I mean, they're gashing them for 8 and 10, 12 yards at a, at a carry, running behind the 6'7", 310-pound senior. That's another 10-yarder. Now Harriet takes it, same play, different back. He'll only get one as Will Robinson has now rushed for 106 yards on the day. Well, what you do if you're a, def a de defensive coach, you take a linebacker and you, you read him out, you know, put him, just cheat him over a half a step and let him know he's got to get there because if your defensive line are getting blocked like that, they're doing the same play other side. This is Antonio Graham off the sweep. And uh, he'll get roughed up by Yeldell. Gain of about one. And now the Pirates have stalled. It's third and goal from the six. Hampton already over its season per game average on the ground, which is 155.4. They have 169 rushing yards today. And run defense has been the problem for Presbyterian averaging allowing opponents 257 per game. Still a ways to go to get there, but nonetheless. They're gonna run that fade. Slant, I believe he was short. down. Yeah, he was short. That's a touchdown in the NFL. It's not in college, Alec Dana. Fourth and one. They're bringing in some big guys. Yep, elbow down at the one with the ball still on the left side of the goal line. Evan Lomax missed the field goal earlier. They turn to the fourth and one package in his stead this time. Hand off Robinson. No, it's no, a play it's fake, Williams. and Delman Williams keeps it for the touchdown. Good first drive for Hampton right out of the gate. And it was mostly success 
with the run. You know it's a good fake when it fools the commentators as well. So Williams in for his second rushing touchdown of the season. As Evan Lomax comes in to try to cut this lead back to three. And he does just that. 11.02 to go in the third brand new ball game. 17-14 Presbyterian over Hampton. Back in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. Evan Lomax set to kick it off. 17-14 PC over Hampton following the score. Head coach Robert Prunty leading the way for the Pirates in his first year. He came over from being an assistant at East Carolina, brought a few players with him as this one goes out of bounds. So PC will get good field position following Lomax's miscue. Prunty, obviously a very good recruiter to get all these, these kids and transfers in from these bigger schools and stuff. Yeah, Prunty was the associate head coach and defensive coordinator at ECU and previously coached for four seasons in a similar role at Cincinnati. He was the DN's coach as well as also the associate head. And then the, the DN coach for three years under Tommy Tuberville at Texas Tech before that. Well, Tommy Tuberville went to Cincinnati. There you go, exactly. So Prunty with a good track record and he's got the players to vouch for it and a whole new coaching staff save Marcus Dixon. Joined him this year at Hampton. Quick out to Keith Pearson. Picks up five yards. Brought down by a combination of Pirates on the backside. Pearson and Deshaun Davis are very diminutive type players. They're not very big, and they're sticking their head in there and just going head to head with these Hampton players. Gain of six on that play. Five catches, 51 yards now on the day for Pearson. Check that, six for 57, that had not been updated. So second and four from the 41. Hand off to Zola Davis. Davis. Gets about a yard before Desmond Sturdevant stands him up. Looks like third and about two, a long two right there. Davis getting a little, their, the backs from PC are reading a little bit better. Now just sitting back reading, waiting for that Hampton surge and then they're, they're cutting off of that surge that initial surge that Hampton gets off their defensive line. Walker taking a little time to get the signal here. Third and two from the 43. Deshaun Davis in motion. Hand off to Jeter, he'll go nowhere. That defensive line just drove the PC line back. I was looking for Pearson in the slot to just get a quick hitter out there. But that was, that just got blown up. That was Norman Oglesby again. He's been all over it today. And a quick three and out, not what Presbyterian wanted following the Hampton score. That's exactly the opposite of what you wanted. That's the seventh tackle of the day for Oglesby. For, you know, that's, Awful good for a first half of, or a half a foot game of football. Bolin punts it away, takes a very favorable PC bounce, fielded all the way back inside their own 10 yard line. Oh, there's blocking the back right there at the 10 yard line. No flags on the yes, field, there however. Is a flag. There is a oh, flag. Oh, there is a flag oh, down yeah, on the far sideline. Side and look who's down there making the tackle. Jicey Yell Dale, who's going to have to go play defense now. He made it. He had to run all the way down there to cover the punt down to about the 20 yard line. And now he ran all the way back to the other 30, 25 yard line to make the tackle. He's gotta be gassed. And there's a flag on the far side. There was a block right in front of the official, blocking the back right in front of the official over there. Here's the call from referee Marcus Woods. And the long return for Aiden Johnson yeah. and subsequent celebration all for naught. You saw the Hampton player who committed the foul laying on the, the ground with his face down. Yeah, Let's see if we can, I think it, was, it had already occurred back there right behind yep. him. 
Yeah, and Yeldell did chase him down. Look yes. at that dive. Yeah, and that's a defensive end running down a return guy. That's that's pretty strong. That's exactly what Yeldell does for this program. He leaves it all out there on the field. He said it at the beginning of this season in his senior year. Why not? Why not? Let's see if they run run left. They've got the back set where he's going to run to that side. And there he goes again. Well, Robinson is a keep pressing that run around the left tackle or the right tackle. They got only two or three that time, which is more of, of what PC wants. Now they're going to, I look for them if they stop that play, they're going to run Williams on a keeper back the opposite way after, they, after they've got that play stopped like they did for the touchdown. Off to Robinson, gets the pass. Wrestled down Michael Fisher looks from like behind, and he Robinson looks wanted like a horse collar. He's got the first down. Yeah, he's got the first down. Yeah, he'll get the first down anyway. Yeah. That back out of the backfield for them has been been open fairly much today. They've just dropped a few out there. That was very close to a horse collar. Couldn't tell if yeah, he just got his jersey, jersey or inside yeah. the shoulder blades. This one taken There's down. Yeldell. Tackle for loss right there. He jetted in from the right side when the ball was running to the left side of the off of the defense, and he made the tackle from behind. Showed some great speed right there. That's nothing but a des desire to play. Six tackles for Yeldell, half a sack as well. Second and 11 from the 17. Back out of the backfield, boom. Boom, Harriet oh. lit up. That's, you know, the only thing about that was a great defensive play, but but the, the, when you have those long locks hanging out of your helmet, they really go flying and it makes a really a bad picture on the two. <laughs> very compelling visually, yes, huh? Very, that's, a, that's, you said it better than I did. Visually compelling, there you go. After missing two games, Michael Fisher is all over the field making tackles, slaying down the lumber. And he forces third and long. Williams again. Get pressure. Now escapes the pocket. Going to take it himself. Colby Campbell in hot pursuit, and he'll force he Williams out of bounds. Down. Looks like he's about two, two and a half, three yard, three yards shy of the first down. Williams is a very good athlete, though. What's the hold up here? They're saying, what's, <laughs> you're thinking, what are they thinking about? Well, you never know. I mean. PC's defense looked like they woke up that series. They were asleep the first series. This is, and to your point about you never know what's going to happen, Hampton hasn't even been in a situation remotely close to this this year. Their five games have been decided by at least 28 points. This one nearly blocked There's and a, a flag. punter run that's into. A, that's got to be a freshman mistake. I don't know, but let's see. And even if they just call running instead of roughing, yeah. this will give them the first down. That'll give them the first down. They ran in. Oh, they called a personal foul. 15 yards on that one. That that is a tremendous mistake. PC has had one one penalty all day. They had that, had one penalty all day, and now they make a 15-yard penalty on a fourth down play. That there's two things you never do on a punt. You never hit the kicker, and you never get off sides. I'm going to take a look Let's at this one again. Here, yeah. First guy misses him. Who's that? That 25? was Rod Haygood. Rod Haygood. You you can't do. You just got to throw yourself the opposite direction. You you can't get in there. If you see you, you're not going to get the, be the first one there and block that kick. Now you've got a gassed defense on the field. There's that same play to the left side of the field and PC's defense that was Jared Nagy that time making that play they are they are zoned in on that one play now and Hampton's trying to ride that ride that one play to to success here they still got three well, they still have three backs that can do it Robinson Harriet and Will Easton that time now Williams throws it it's incomplete Clean drop by Lorenzo Thompson, but another flag if, down. If Dick Curitan had been not playing the playing the ball instead of the player, he might have jumped down there and got that thing right before it hit the ground. 
right. Ah. It's hard to see. That was a quick replay. Ineligible receiver downfield. What do you do if you're Tommy Spangler? And it's going to take the Third take it down. Yeah. Well, you got to get that defense off the field. The defense should, you know, it's playing pretty pretty energized right now for having that that uh, that long series and chasing half their players were chasing him down the field on that the kickoff return. We'll be third down and seven from the 43. Two receivers each side. There's a blitz. Pass yeah. all the way. It's picked up, and it's incomplete. Byron Barney, the intended target, but Williams was hurried and really couldn't make a good play. Yeah, he couldn't set his feet to get the, get the ball to Barney, and uh, Barney had to come back trying to make a catch off the ground, and it couldn't get there. That was a good answer by PC's defense after that flub. They're running into the kicker penalty. Well, now they'll try to avoid the same fate. Ivan Oraha back out to punt it away again. I can, I can promise you that he will not go in and try to block this punt. Low snap. It's Whoa. bobbled, and no one even came close to him, to your well, point. Davis muffs the punt, and it's picked up by Hampton. Oh, my goodness. And PC special is teams shooting is them, shooting themselves in the foot big time here. Now you're going to send that that – you're going to send that defense back out there for a third time. For a third time. Davis is usually sure-handed back there and just tries to rush to get the ball off his feet. And it was a short kick, so the Hampton defenders had plenty of time to get down there and cover. You think that was the mistake there? That's what I see on replay yeah. that Davis probably shouldn't have gone after that ball in the first place. shouldn't have gone after that ball, no. It was a short kick. Now, if Davis had a – you know, like a pop or a line drive in, in the outfield in baseball, if you zero in on it can get there and make a great play, that's fine. But don't take chances right here. Third opportunity for Hampton. This one's incomplete. Broken up by Dirk Sheraton, who's been all over the ball today. Yeah, there, the, the PC defense, now he's getting a little reprimanded for his uh, showmanship out there after he makes the tackle. He hit him really good. Couldn't hold on to the ball. You can't, can't make a bunch of hand signals out there. You're going to get unsportsmanlike after that. Second and 10 from the 28. Williams, There's the keeper, Williams escapes Yeldell. Keeps There's moving. There's a spin move. That, see, that's the PC not making those tackles. Yeldell's going like, he said, I'm gas. He said, bring somebody in for me. Seven yards on second down will be third and three. That's what the defense having to go out there three series in a row will do for you right there. They'll miss tackles and they're getting tired. Hampton still hurrying it up. Play action onto the outside. Another, Another miss tackle. tackle. And he's going to get the first, first down, down Pirates. And you've seen now in three consecutive plays, John, or in fact two on one play, I should say, Jicey Yeldell and Colby Campbell combining for three missed tackles. How often do right. we say that? You don't see that, especially out of those two guys, because both of them are, Colby Campbell is one of the leading tacklers in the Big South, and uh, Yeldell's a senior with all the experience in the world. I mean, those are just bad plays for PC. And my correction, Campbell only one of the two. Trent Carrington missed that last tackle. He okay. quickly got up and they switched places in a hurry. But nonetheless, Carrington, you can add to that uh, combination Unusual three to miss tackles. 4.03 to go now in the third. Hampton with all the momentum, cued by PC mistakes. And here goes Will Robinson inside the 10 with a gain of six on first down. It's a tale of two halves. Penalty make, I mean, penalties and mistakes by special teams uh, at PC was, that wasn't happening in the first half. And they've really had a lot of those here in the third quarter. And off to Robinson again as Hampton goes back to the well. He picks up a yard for being brought down. Third, be third and two or so right now. Hampton player on the ground right there. That could be the, is that the big left tackle? That two is. Two Hampton players on the ground. That's Derek Moreland down on the far side. 73. Either player that gets attended to has to come out of the game for at least one play. 
Yeah, Jabril Gee got up pretty quickly, but Moreland is still down. Moreland has appeared in every game, hasn't, hasn't started any of them. But he's been a little rover throughout the offensive line. We'll step aside for just a moment. 3.28 to go in the third. Back in a moment. Big breather do you. Only Hardy's brings the heat with full flavored all star meals like the new hot ham and cheese starting at five bucks. Get a real meal paid for by Hardy's. What do you do here? Do you run Robinson or do you fake it to him and let Williams take it on the other side? They're going to go pass it. Fade. A little fade route to the end zone. Turning around is Marcel Paul with no chance. Rod Haygood in on the close coverage. And you saw coming right out of break, the athletic trainers tending to Derek Moreland. You see, he just got his leg taken out underneath him. Lucky he didn't spear his head into the ground the way he kind of took an awkward fall. People can't imagine what happens up in those massive piles of men. And these are men. No question about that. So Hampton will try to tie things up with a field goal. Evan Lomax is 0 for 1 today, missed from 48, which would have been his new career high. This one is from 25 from the left hash. And he knocks it through. So Evan Lomax now 4 for 6, 4 for 7 rather on the season. And we are all tied up, 319 to go. This is Big South Football. Spend more time floating about on your inflatable swan. Presbyterian miscues kept that drive alive for Hampton. And now Tommy Spangler's team has found itself in a tie. The scoreboard on your screen is not yet updated. It is 17-17, 3.19 to go here in the third quarter as Lomax kicks it out of bounds following his 25-yard field goal. Even the uh, Hampton kickers fired up. He kicked it eight yards deep into the end zone that time. I was hoping Davis would get a chance to make amends and see what he can do on a kickoff after muffing that punt. Just an unusual series of mistakes well, for Presbyterian as they roughed the they kicker were, they on the first punt. They were actually lucky. Yes. I mean, they they had a muff punt. They had a penalty, a, a running it, actually personal foul uh, into the kicker, the punter. They're lucky that Hampton only got three. They've got to answer and keep that defense off the field, though. Walker on his back foot looking for Davis, a bit underthrown, and Robert Scott, yeah. the fourth, got his right hand to that, it. That should be his first incompletion, I think. It is. And that was that was the quarterback's fault. Davis was was open. Davis might have scored if he caught that ball. There's nobody behind the defender there. I mean, the receiver hit. He see. He, you see, Davis said that was touchdown, man. Walker just didn't have a great form on that pass. Wasn't too hurried, but he just he tried to place it in there instead of throwing, just getting out and throwing it. Second just. down. Walker out of the pocket. Walker. Throws it incomplete, intended for Keith Pearson. I can't see Walker running a whole lot today because of that shoulder injury, but he could have got five yards and ran out of bounds. It's hard to throw the ball when you're right-handed running to the left-hand side of the field. Not to mention when you got a 250-pound guy chasing you down, breathing down your neck. This is gut, chuck, gut check time, I should say, for Presbyterian now as Hampton has fully seized momentum and now starting to see some weaknesses emerge here, or at least well, some things not going right. Well, these are self-induced weaknesses by Presbyterian. There he's open. Keith Pearson's in the middle of the field and wide open. Nearly and, and picked off. Well, that, that ball was, I thought, was just trying to be thrown away. But uh, before he threw that ball, two seconds before that, Pearson was wide open in the middle of the field. But he was scrambling to his left again. And uh, with a bad shoulder, you just can't whip that ball out there like that. Walker started the day 14 for 14 and then just threw three consecutive incomplete passes as the Blue Hose go three and out for the second straight drive. And now Hampton has a chance to take the lead with this next possession. Jackson Boland in to kick it away. 
Has some distance. He's been very solid in that regard today. They, they, he just they, Aiden Johnson now. Presbyterian was running down the field with a 10-yard wide hole right in the middle of their coverage. And Johnson just took advantage of it. I mean, it, these look like two different teams, these two halves. Well, Looks Aiden, like Hampton came to play and PC didn't. Well, Aiden Johnson, you'll recall, returned the last punt. 66 yards only to have a 68 yard block in the back penalty bring it all the way back so you know he was itching to get another chance and he does again there takes it all the way down to the pc 38. we saw a replay you saw two pc players running in virtually eye formation one behind the other instead of fanning out or spreading out from left to right and uh, they just gave him that hole well now the pirates in business once again They'll that Play fake, Williams over the middle, it is picked off. Working his way to the near side and what a turnaround. Rod Haygood has been involved in coverage a lot today and now he gets a huge turnover in favor of the Presbyterian Blue Hose. Awesome play by Haygood there. He just read the quarterback's eyes, stepped in front of that skinny post right there is what I'm gonna call it. And, and if Haygood had used this this other defender of PCs for a block, he had he had another 15 yards coming there because the Hampton offense was hardly aware that there was an interception. And that was an athletic play too, kind of oh, rolled his arm from back to front and caught it sidearm. A little pitch to Deshaun pop, Davis. That's a Ohio State pop pass. It didn't work because we were PC ran Davis in front of him as a fake handoff and, and did a pop pass behind the line of scrimmage to Davis, and it didn't work. A loss of one, but do you think that a play might be called in that situation just to maybe give John Walker a little bit more confidence with those three straight incompletions uh, just do a little something like sure. that? I'm not sure. Walker's been really good to the slot receiver on a five-yard you know, pattern right there, picking up five yards. There's nobody in the backfield, five wides this time. So they got a pass, unless they decide to run a quarterback draw, which is not advisable for Walker. He'll go over the middle of the field to Sean Davis, and he's popped at the 30. He got a five-yard completion there because they had lost yardage the play before. Now it's third and six. And with that catch, as inconspicuous as it might be there with the five-yard gain, Deshaun Davis has now become the all-time Presbyterian Division I record holder in catches with 119, surpassing the record previously held by Toby Antigua, one of the Presbyterian grads who's made who's, it in the pros. Who's playing, yeah, playing Canadian football right now. So congratulations to Deshaun Davis, but it is now third down and long for PC. Run. Walker letting it go deep, looking for Keith Pearson off his fingertips. Boy, I tell you what, it was right there. Uh, Pearson was right there. And uh, you'll see it right here. Got, gets away with a little bit of a push off. Walker was looking at him the whole way. And here's the punting team again for PC. Three straight, three and outs. Not again, about a half yard further. Could well, have been a touchdown. Yeah. That, that should have been a, a completion in the uh, pass to Davis across the middle of the last series. Now, the, I can tell you that the punter, the punter was told to kick away from the return. And so Boland did. Yeah. That was, that was actually a good punt for the PC side because their defense didn't have to chase him down again. He's, he's pretty prolific on those punt returns. I wouldn't kick it to him either as Hampton will get it at its own 21 yard line. So in effect, they touch back. Yeah. Let's see if they go left side, running that play again. Derek Moreland looks like he's back in at left tackle for Hampton. They're going the same way again. Will Eason this time, first down and more. Plugs his way to the 34, gain of 13. Here they go, hurry up. 
PC was not set that time, still made a good good play on the ball. Two and a half, three yards. That's Eason now with 35 yards on six carries today. Stop the clock for some reason out there. I don't know what's we going on. We got a Hampton on. player oh, down. Oh, I couldn't see him behind the. Yeah. Behind the big 54 for PC. That is Jabril Gee, who's been banged up a few times today. Yeah, that's his second time down. Sometimes when you get an ankle or a knee or something like that, and you get on the sideline and run it out, and they put ice on it, it uh, feels better. And you go in, and all of a sudden, it's, it might even, that might just be a cramp. Always good. You are watching ESPN Plus, and this Big South Network broadcast is brought to you by Hardy's. So Gee off under his own power for the second time. Good to see that. Second down and seven now from the 37. Here's Will Robinson. Good job by the defensive end there. Stretching that play out, not letting them get outside. Combination of Jaycee Yeldell and Sanford Satcher. Yeah, Satcher made a good play that time. Just not letting them get outside and turn that corner on them. That's what's been hurting them. And the four fingers go in the air for both the Pirates and the Blue Hose as the third quarter comes to an end with a deadlocked game here on this beautiful fall Saturday afternoon in South Carolina. 17 all, Hampton and Presbyterian. The exciting conclusion of this one comes your way next. You are watching Big South Football on the BSN on ESP. I'm reminding you, Laura loves you, and you're doing a great job. Welcome back to Bailey Memorial Stadium in Clinton, South Carolina. Alongside John Ork, I'm Brett Williams. Thanks for coming with us. Hampton and Presbyterian, first ever matchup between the Pirates and Blue Hose, and it's all tied up as we go to the fourth. A lot of movement. They weren't set. See, the Hampton offensive line didn't have their hand down, so they can't play that, oh, I had to flinch card. Yeldell trying to split the gap. Delman Williams escapes the pocket, but not the Blue Hose as he's wrapped up and sent out of bounds by Robert Baker. Baker did a good job. This, that was a big series for the PC defense to get off the field. I mean, PC's offense is, you know, going to have to, they're going to have to do something and eat some clock and, and get out here and get some kind of points on the board or they're going to put their defense the last five minutes of the game in a bad state. Against a very fast Hampton team, as we've talked about a lot. And now Pearson, PC had to call a timeout. Pearson was on the field for some reason. So PC forced to burn its first timeout and another special teams error. Again, that cost Can't, PC in yeah. the third quarter. If you're just joining us as Hampton punted it away after a three and out, PC was called for roughing the kicker. Then another three and out, muffed the punt, turned into a field goal for Hampton. Yeah, and that's, that's the difference in the game right there that keeps it tied versus the lead. And that's the third, third part. you got offense, defense, special teams. And PC was good on offense the first, first, uh, first half, better on defense the first half. And, and then, but the second half for special teams has been, you know, toxic for PC right now. So Ivan Oraha back to punt it away. Deshaun Davis looking for redemption. He's deep. He'll catch it at the 19 with some blockers. Here goes Davis around the 35. Hop skipping a jump to the 40 where he is forced out of bounds by Desmond Sturdevant. About a 21, 20, 22 yard return by Davis. He did get some redemption there, but it still doesn't pick up three points for him that they lost on his last muff. That 
was almost a hit out of bounds. I hadn't seen much of Myers the second half either. I would think they would keep him involved in the offense. Hand off to Davis. He flips it to Pearson. He can throw it. He's going to take it this time. Swarmed by Pirates and eventually forced out. The problem with that, with that whole play is they ran a reverse into the short side of the field and didn't give the reversing Pearson, the, per, the reversing runner, much feel to make any moves or stuff in. Remember, Pearson threw a touchdown earlier this season to Deshaun Davis on a similar play. A little halfback option. We'll see if they're setting that up for later in the game. Game the first Big South player in three years to throw and catch a touchdown in the same game. That came against Bluefield. Over the middle, Davis drops it. Wow, Davis just didn't. I mean, that ball, it was a catchable ball, but it was off. It was off. It was a low snap, and I think that was, but Davis has got to catch that ball right there. You could hear it hit the palm of his hands. When you catch a ball in college football, you better catch it with your fingertips. That that makes it a soft catch right there. When you hit the ball, when you hear that smacking sound, that, that means it hits you flat in the middle of the hand. Presbyterians only totaled 13 yards in the second half. Trying to change things, need eight yards to get a fresh set of downs for the first time since the second quarter. Davis, That's and it's picked pick. off. He wanted a flag as he got turned around, but it's Robert yeah. Scott, the fourth, who took it hard as he went to the grass, picks it off, and now he's shaking up. Let's see what's going on here. Let, I mean, let's see if Davis has got a case. Can't see Davis at that point in time. I don't know if we're going to get another look at it, but from the end zone camera or not. A lot of times, that, I mean, that, nobody touched him. He fell to the ground by himself, but a lot of times in the sport of football and karate, what happens is you you fall on the ball and it knocks the wind out of you. Yeah, I, I think that's what happened because he had the wherewithal to actually show the referees, that, yes, I have the ball, and then just came back and realized yeah. what – Kind of the shock breathe. set in. But we'll step aside as he's taking a look at Hampton football when we return to Clinton, South Carolina in just a moment. You're getting a look at Robert Scott, the fourth, who picked up his first interception of the year, got a bit shaken up on the fall to the ground There's as Hampton restarts. Will Robinson missed the another th one. Third missed tackle. First down and more. Will Robinson still on his feet. All the way down to the Presbyterian 37. Gain a 16 on first down for Robinson as he crosses the 130-yard threshold today. Yeah. PC is not hanging wrapping up right there you can't you can't let a guy not you can't make contact again there's Williams on the keeper slides for eight yards and his legs have become much more of a factor in this second half as he's now up to 69 yards well he had that 20 25 yard run right down the middle Second down and two. Hampton's offense is putting pressure on the PC defense, and PC's offense is not putting any pressure on the Hampton defense. Well, they're set at four. PC, just about 15 yards of total offense in the second half. It's not how you get it done. And uh, Jarrett Nagy will That's more like pull up right the tackle there. in the backfield. That's what you want your linebackers to do. You want them to read, take a gap shot every now and then, or, or go, scrape off the block. Move down the line, parallel to the line, and make the tackle on the other side of the blockers. It's one of two things. That's it. Third and short up coming from the 30. Blue Hose em fans em coming alive. Empty backfield. Look for, I'm looking for a quarterback draw here from Williams, and there's nobody behind the center. Here comes the blitz. Quick pass, complete first down to the 25. Got five, that's they needed three, and it's complete to Marcel Paul. If you're gonna if you're gonna be in blitz, uh, a heavy blitz like that, you're gonna have to run man coverage press. 
Williams taking a shot oh, to the end zone. Open. Incomplete, he dropped it. There's a flag on the near side of the end zone. We'll check that foul. That was a good recovery by the defensive back to get out. He was open by a yard and a half or two yards. Antonio Graham had two hands on the football, couldn't bring it in. That might be holding back in there. There's two flags down there. There's one on the... Oh, my goodness. No wonder they stopped it. 12 men on the field. Yep. Another unforced error. Yep. Good recovery by six. And yeah, Michael Fisher again yep. gets his hand to the football. Fresh First set of downs for the Pirates. Yep. Inside the red zone now. Hand off to Will Eason. Only got about a yard out of that. Hampton has now rushed for 240 yards today. Again, PC is average well, allowing 257, so right. this is. And that's with Kennesaw running up a ton of yards on him. Second week playing a quarterback like Williams, Chandler Burks, arguably the best in the country Chandler at dual Burks, threat. Right. Williams with the play fake. Now gives it right to Eason, who he had faked the first time. Got the first down. That's all they want. They want first down, new fresh, fresh set of downs. Makes it to the 11. If PC's defense can get a turnover here or hold them down to a field goal attempt right here, that'd be a big win for them and hopefully Free play potentially, no flag. I didn't flag. see a flag because what happened is that the quarterback quarterback actually went down and made a motion. I didn't know if that was that he could legally do that or not. And I know they caught they've called that on some quarterbacks in the past, but I mean he leaned over and actually bent his body over at the waist like the ball should have been snapped. See if you can see him here. Oh. A little bit late. Yeah, it's late on that. It was also close to a push off in the end zone yeah. there. Lorenzo That's Thompson being covered by Noah Suber. Good play by Suber. Second down There's from the 12, draw. bursts up the middle. See Will that? Robinson, touchdown. When you're, when you're blitzing, if you don't cover every gap, that's what's going to happen to you. That We already talked about that earlier in the game. If you don't have somebody back there that's going to make that gap and you get you get that little that little slide in there, there it is right there. Cody, Colby Campbell went to the left side of the center, and they ran that to the, his left to the right side of the offensive center, and they ran it to the left side right where he, he was normally playing. Evan Lomax in to try to make it a seven-point game once again. Seven point in Hampton's favor instead of PC's favor. Indeed. And that is 17 unanswered for Hampton as well. 10.48 to go. Pirates leading the Blue Hose 24 17. On Will Robinson riding high, a career day for him. His second touchdown as well from 11 yards out. Somebody. In the, in the PC side of the ball is going to have to take charge of this game, whether it's Keith Pearson, Deshaun Davis, or John Walker, or or Jeter. But they haven't been able to run the ball, and they've had a couple drops here in the second half where they were 13 for 13 in the first half. Deshaun Davis drifts back into the end zone, and he will think about it, but then take a knee. A uh, bit of pushing and shoving back at the 25. The kicker, Evan Lomax, was involved in that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if he gets kicked out of the game, that would be a big blow for Hampton because he's, with some of his kicks, he has kept them in the game. And with all due respect to kickers, I must say, I I just can't imagine why a kicker would go into uh, right. some sort he's of fracas actually, with those guys. He's supposed to be the safety, the last man. A Presbyterian's offense, which Good has been. Good by Davis, I thought. They picked up a couple. Presbyterian completely ineffective offensively here in the second half, trying to get a first down. They're trying to do things now that they're really not good at. They've got a young freshman or freshman, sophomore, one senior laden 
offensive line going up a veteran defensive line for Hampton, who's bigger and stronger, it looks like. And they're trying to do that when they, they sh should probably be trying to do short passes. Right here, they're lined up in a running formation. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to run. It's good to pass out of a running formation because the defense... Pearson on the jet sweep, they'll give it to Jeter, and Desmond Sturdivant, the first man in, you, wagging his finger. I don't think yeah. so. Do you see all the the offensive? Did you see all the offensive linemen who were st stood up with their hands on their hips while the play was still being made there, right at the end? It really wasn't. Uh, those Hampton players are standing them up and getting off the line, getting off the blocks very fast. That's why they've tried to run a couple reverses and things like that. That's what those are the kind of things that, that get them back, keep them on their heels. Third and five here for Presbyterian, desperately needing a first down. Timeout, Hampton. So both teams now down to two timeouts. Well, they had right here in that formation with the five wides, they had a they had a five-yard, eight-yard pass available to them if the slot receiver just in formation. You can make an, create an advantage for yourself by formation or by skill, and you know, or, or or deception. And there's three or four ways to do it. But if you can get the right formation and confuse the defense, you can get you a five to eight-yard gain immediately. So smart recognition there of that by Robert Prunty. But maybe Presbyterian will use this timeout to kind of get the troops back in line. I mean, it just you mentioned it earlier, John, how it's just been a tale of two halves and how Hampton came out ready to play in the second half, and it just hasn't looked like PC has. I think, though, the real turning point was that uh, that roughing the kicker that kind of spun everything sideways well, for it PC. Gave, it gave Hampton a second chance, and then Deshaun Davis gave him a third chance on the same drive where PC's defense had played their hearts out. And... Uh, Got them broken every time by special teams. So here's the third and five look. Two receivers each side. Zola Davis in the backfield. PC has changed formation. They put Davis in the backfield. Instead of having five wides, they're going to release him out through the middle. And I'll float it. It's complete to Creighton Buchanan for the first Blue Hose first down in some time. Up to the 46-yard line. Gain of 11. That's a big play for PC right there. Because that as another Hampton player goes down. This has been a tough day for the Pirates here yeah. on the road. They're going to have a tough day next week. All these guys dinged up. Well, they do have a bye next week, so they'll take that. They can we they can beat them. Yeah, this is this is true. <laughs> Odd schedule this year for Hampton because well the con the conversion from right one conference to another, leaving the MEAC and the, being an independent, and having to scrape up games with D two or NAIA teams, kind of like we, you know, kind of like Presbyterian is. I mean, we've got to play a Big South schedule here, uh, but uh, because of their previous commitment, but there were six teams in the Big South, so that means you play five games. That means you've got other games. You've got to go out and get games. Hampton, we mentioned earlier, has beaten two Division II teams, lost to three FCS opponents after today, the last four games for Hampton against an NCCAA team, National Christian College Athletic Association, Division Three, another FCS and the NAIA. So they're playing pretty much anybody up there in Hampton right. until they join the Big South full-time next year. Jarius Jeter roughed up in the backfield. Pirates out on the attack in the backfield, well, leading they, the they, way. They drove the right tackle back two yards into the backfield, and Jeter had nowhere to go. I mean, that that was not on Jeter. He's lucky he, he uh, maintained the line of scrimmage. They're going four wides on one side of the field. Second and 10 after Jeter got back to the line of scrimmage. Snap to Walker. Blitz picked up, now off to the outside, caught by Davis. They're not going to give him where he caught the ball. They're going to give him where he ran back to and tried to get a, a circle around the, the defender. So he lost two yards after he got the, caught the ball. Bringing Jeter back in.
Third and nine now from the 47. Cover two, defense. Pearson in motion. Walker looking right, now in trouble. Escapes the pocket right. with a ton of daylight in front of him on the left side. First down PC, but a flag comes on the near sideline. Back in the backfield area. It could be pass interference or defensive holding because this was all receivers over here. If that's against PC, they've shot themselves in the foot again. But it looked, I mean, that, that area. And the flag I, I picked up. I do like the way the officials the, the last year or two have really gotten together and discussed these fouls. Because he immediately ran to another official. He said, I threw the flag because of this. He said, what do you think? He said, this is what he said. No, that's really, you know. So, worked out for PC that time. I've been saying for a long time in my life, doesn't matter how long it takes, just get it right. Yeah, get it right. That's all the fans want. And the players. A couple of first downs now on this drive for the Blue Hose. John Walker flings it. And Looks it like is. It caught out of bounds. No, no catch. Yeah, just a bit out. Well, the, the other thing that I've noticed this half, very few penalties on Hampton. They were, they were undisciplined the first, the first half. Nine penalties in the first half, just one here in half number two. Big difference. PC's now they're down to 6.59, seven minutes left in the game. They've got to go down and get some points here to get back in this game. Walker to the sideline. It's caught Jeter. Jarius Jeter out of the backfield. Just picking their way down the field. That's how they did it the first, except for that big explosive play, but that's where they did the, got the uh, three-pointer the field goal and the other touchdown. Eight yard gain brings up third and two. Ball resting at the Hampton 34. Still maybe not quite in field goal range, not that a field goal does what PC wants it right now. They're looking for the end zone. Hand off to Jeter, plunges forward. He'll be close, Looks second like effort. I think he did get it. Got to love the way Jeter gets a push after contact. There he goes. There he gets getting another yard or two right there. And how about the whole O line coming yeah. up and pushing him forward even further? I think they're going to pull out the chains here. Maybe it's a bad angle I've got, but it looks right at it. It's a big call here if, it, if they don't make it, though. Look at that. First down by inside the stripe of the football. I mean, it looked like about an inch there. It's a matter of links. Right. Was there a kink in the link is the, is the question. <laughs> it better not be. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we see somebody whipping out an index card again, right? Yeah, that's right. Goodness. Still bunch, don't know how bunch, that's an official bunch formation. Role. Look at this. They will probably pass out of this. Got Jeter Just to Walker's draw, right draw here. All in. Nobody, nobody knew who to cover. Going to hand off on the jet sweep to Deshaun Davis. Good block. Bounces it out. Oh. Can't cross the 30. That's good pursuit by the Hampton defense. Darion Carr runs yeah. him out of bounds. That, that was that was a good play by the by the Hampton defense there. They they read it, strung it out. That right there, that block couldn't couldn't spring him in. He had nowhere to cut up. You're always looking to cut up when you run one of those jet sweeps or reverses like that. There was nowhere to cut up. Eventually, you're going to run out of sideline. Picks up a yard, so second and nine from the 31. Play action. Off his back foot. Dangerous throw. Turning around Robert Scott, the wow. fourth. Couldn't get to Walker's, a place where he could pick it off. Walker got, got hit that time. He's dangling his, it looks like he's dangling his right shoulder. He's, he's bent over there. You got a question, 
Oh, he got hit hard by yeah. Keenan Moore. Well, he had his arm up in the air. He hasn't raised his right arm yet. He's coming out, yeah. This is not good for the PC home team here tonight. So here comes Jordan Morgan, the freshman from Taylor, South Carolina, who is six for seven this season with 84 yards. Had one 21-yard completion on a fake punt against Bluefield. Got to go, seven seconds left. Timeout. And they'll call a timeout to get him and the rest of the offense squared away. And Morgan played over half of the game last week at Kennesaw State after Walker's shoulder was first hurt late in the first half. Well, Walker got hit trying to throw that ball down the field, and he was up like this and got hit here, and I think he fell back on it. But, I mean, and it might not have been the hit. It could have been the, the throw trying to go that far down the field, even though he's thrown a couple down the field today. But when you got a, a, a tear or a bruise in your shoulder like that and you let one rip, it just uh, – because it didn't have any gas on it. We were – I mean, PC was lucky that it didn't get intercepted that time. Seems like Walker's mechanics all day have been kind of trying to compensate for that mm -hmm. as he's been – sort of throwing more of his body into it yeah. and looking a little more awkward with the, the, the release. And, and he kind of could have got just dinged a little bit like a pinch nerve in his neck. If you've ever had a stinger, you, all of those things are just, they're awful for about two to five minutes. And then they're, uh, then they're gone. Matter of fact, he's back in yes, there. Yes, he is. Well, maybe that's all it was. Big third down coming yeah. up. Yeah, he, right under his arm was his sh the defender's shoulder pad. This is a big play right here. Dante Myers in motion. As you Look mentioned, he's been a, relatively they're quiet. They're prevent defense. Walker lets it go, and there's Myers. First down, Blue Hose. Hit hard, but take it into the red zone to the 17. Gain of 15 yards that, on third and nine. That didn't look like a hurt shoulder right there. Not at all. He zipped that ball. And to who? Again, Myers is having a heck of a game. Four catches, 93 yards for Myers, and the touchdown. Well, that's what I asked about uh, 10 minutes ago. Where was Myers? <laughs> well, they found him, and the Blue Hose offenses looked like their first half selves here in the fourth. They just can't get Davis and Jeter going here in the second half, and they're trying to trying to run the ball and keep the defense honest, but that defensive line for Hampton is stout. They uh, they haven't bought into anything. They, you know they're they're teeing off on the on the pass rush and they're teeing off on the run. I don't. You know it, it's hard to imagine anybody ran a lot against them. This drive's been going for about five and a half minutes. Yeah, Three fifty-five uh, on the clock. Complete to Creighton Buchanan, flag oh, down. A hold or a, a chop block or a hold in there, most likely. Holding is a preliminary call there. Yeah. Oh, well, it's coming back. That's a critical penalty at a critical time at a critical spot on the field. James, the left guard. Another injured player for Hampton. Hasn't felt off the cuff watching from here, John, at least to me, that yeah. this has been a super physical game. It's not one of those you go, it's been chippy, it's been this, yeah. it's been that. But a lot of players have gone down. It's a perfect day. It's not cramping too much. Yeah. Thought I saw one cramp earlier, you know. Right. In the first half. I can't tell. That's who. Robert Scott again. He was the one that made the interception. Right, and, then... and, and that, that's twice we've seen a player go out for Hampton, come back in, and go down again. We'll take a short break. Hampton 24, Presbyterian 17 with the Blue Hose driving back in a second. Rose! 
Robert Scott IV did get up under his own power, walking around among a bunch of his fired up teammates here. Presbyterian facing second and 20 from the Hampton 27, down by seven with 335 and counting to go. John Walker airing it out deep and it is incomplete off the hands of Creighton Buchanan. Some excellent coverage by Chaka Dira Suba to break it up. Looked like, uh, look like Buchanan was gonna make that catch. He had inside position if he could have just pulled the ball down before the defender knocked it down, but he couldn't get it down to his body. Now, you, I, I got to tell you, I think that this is four down territory, but they've got 20 yards to go in two downs. They've got to make some 12, 15 yard gainers. Hampton fans on the far sideline making a lot of noise. They've traveled well from the Tidewater region of Virginia. Third and 20. Short pass caught by Buchanan. Up to the 20, got seven yards. Now it's fourth and 13. And the offense is not showing any sign of coming off. No, I wouldn't think so. Not with three minutes left. The way Hampton's uh, offense has been moving the ball. Everybody up on their feet, both sides of the field. This is a must, must 12 yard gain for PC. From the 20. A senior. He's been there before. Here he goes. There's the blitz. Fading. No one in particular. Pearson. Keith Pearson comes out of nowhere to make the catch. Did he get a foot down? Yes, he did. He did. The official side judge right there said was showing reception like he catched the ball. They still got it. Look at here. Hampton's got another player down. That looks like a cramp right there. Look at the Pearson what go up and get that ball. a play by Keith Pearson. That's a catch in the NFL. Yeah. He got both feet down on the back side of that. And it keeps the Blue Hose crowd and cause alive today. Uh -oh. You hear the, the P, PC is the sideline is now doing the, the chant that the Hampton team was doing. Now they've got four more shots at the end zone here. Question is, if they – if – if they score a touchdown on this series, do they go for two or do they go to oh. overtime? That's a heck of a play by Keith Pearson. Again, yes. Tommy Spangler said so much about how good of a football player this guy is. And you see it in a lot of ways, dynamic, athletic, and he keeps it going. First and goal now from the five for PC. Looking for Pearson again, back corner of the end zone. Got it. Touchdown! Yeah. Official was right there on it. Second score of the day for Pearson and second consecutive yeah. catch making plays for the Blue Hose late. You saw the ball up there. Oh. This one could be coming back. This is going to right. be close. Well, he had control of the ball, and the ball, the defender, after he stepped out of bounds, made him bobble the ball, but he never lost control of the ball. Does that? You have to have control of the ball all the way down. I think my question is, and we'll see if we can see right. this again, but did it slide up his helmet? It did slide up right by his shoulder pad and his helmet there. And will they consider that a, a loss? And we'll see where his well, feet were at here's, the time. Here's, here, here's the question. Was he already out of bounds when the defender tried to knock it out? You'll see right here. He's got the ball. It's under control. He's got control of it. He never loses control. He's trying to keep it away from the defender. Let's see. And it's got to be irrefutable evidence to overturn the touchdown. We'll see what the officials say, whether he was still bobbling it or not. Now you do see the PC kicker out there was out there warming up. Let's see if we get another look Question at this. Question is this. right here, he's got the ball. He's got it pressed up against his shoulder. That's the ball right there up top. 
he's got control of it. Here is where the, the player, after a yard out of bounds, tries to make a play and still break it up. He's made, he's made a football move and he's made two steps. That's kind of the guideline that the officials go by. So question is, is did he get those two steps in and then out of a yard out of bounds, he tried to knock it out. This may honestly turn into it, a judgment call about it, where did he have control right. because you could, you could I think you can make the argument that he wasn't in full control of that ball until after all was said and done. I think you're right either way. But to your point, is it indisputable? We'll find out together in just a moment. If it stands, PC will be an extra point away from tying this game. If not, it'll be second and goal from the five. You know, when you first, when you after the first two series from each team, you thought this might have been a shootout game. Right there, he's got it. He's got control of it, and he's still got control. He's got it pressed against his helmet. Then the defender actually horse collared him. A little bit on you the way down. You can see that, yeah. Yep, yep. And yep. he never lost control of the ball. The defender still fighting, <laughs> and uh, Pearson's holding it up, saying, "I got it. I got it." He never got it from me. That's that's this is going to be a very questionable call. Either team is going to have an opportunity to argue their side if it goes against them. Could be discussed for a long time, depending on the outcome of this. Right. Again, these teams will be conference foes for exactly a year. We'll play next season, and then yeah, time will tell PC beyond would, that. We'll have to go to. Hampton to play in Virginia next year. And I know the offensive team and coaches are down there trying to figure out if, if it's this, you know, we're going to kick. If, if it's not, we're going to run this play. And if it's not, we're going to run the next play. They are taking a long time, long, hard look at this. It's hard to call a touchdown off the board when it was ruled a touchdown up front. They are still. This is a long, long. They've probably taken 10 looks at this, if not more. We've seen oh. four here up in the booth. Well, the headset has finally here come off of Marcus Woods. Here's the call. Oh, no. Yep, incomplete, saying he did not control it until he was out of bounds. Wow. That's a tough call. PC's got to an answer. Ball's at the five-yard line. They got three three chances to get it in the end zone. 2.14 on the clock. The plot thickens, John. Well, here's, here's something else. John Walker is not in there. No, it's Jordan Morgan. Yeah, number 11's out there instead of number 16. Jeter to his right, Zola Davis in the wing. Davis in motion now. Hand off to Jeter. No, Morgan kept it. Counter. He's got space. Touchdown, Jordan Morgan. That's, that's what Morgan was in there for. He has shown it consistently when he's been in the game, even going back to the preseason, how fast he is, how decisive he is on his feet, and it yep. works wonders here. There's the Blue Hose. I've gotten the touchdown after all. Yep. As soon as I saw him in there, I go, something's up. And now it's on the foot of Gardner Duckworth, who's eight for nine on extra points this season. Oh, my. It is no good. No good. Did he, he missed miss it. That? Wide to the right. Wow. Head to, wide to the right? It was wide to the right. Oh my goodness. 208 left on the clock. PC misses an extra point. Let's see if we can see what happened here. They put a little pressure from the right side, but Boy. wow, how do you miss an extra point in a game like this? This is what happens when you get a team decimated by the move that Presbyterian College did last year by taking 
scholarship football away and you get a bunch of freshmen on the team. Well, Duckworth is a redshirt junior, but he has not yeah, played not, before. Uh, yeah, to your point, Brett Norton was the punter right, and kicker all of last right. season, left the program. Right, that's my point. When you, when you have people who leave the program that are your seniors and juniors, you're, you're limited to, to your staff that you have. Now Presbyterian has got to, they have one timeout left. They've got to onside kick this. Hampton's got everybody up there. Hampton gets this recovery. It's basically game over. Well, do you kick it to the side of the field? They have six, or the kick it to the side of the field, they have four. Drew Gilbert will handle it. The kickoff I say, specialist. I say you kick it right up the middle and see if you can get it to the 15 yard line with nobody. Wow, this is. Gotta have some speedy guys to yeah. go get that ball. Kicked it to the no, right. Kicked it and just cherry hopped it. Right to number 48. On the hop, Tyler Frazier. Frazier, Frazier makes the cherry hop play. PC's offense showed a lot of a lot of grit that time. You, all that all that drama and all that pressure. Just a, just a one hopper right right to the Hampton player, and all that all that drama with the touchdown and the call back and everything. All of it was a moot point because you miss miss an extra point. Hampton's just going to take knees. Or maybe not. Or run the ball. They'll hand it off to Will Robinson. He'll pick up three yards, and Presbyterian will use its final timeout at 2.01. That's all you can do. Presbyterian's got an injured player down there. That was Colby Campbell coming off there injured. Looks like he got a stinger. His left, left wrist or hand. This Big South game is brought to you in part by Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. PC needs a strip right here. Hampton needs to hang on to the ball with two hands. Looks like it's either going to be Robinson or Williams running the ball. They've got to have plays to have some ball security here. PC's got to go for the ball, strip it out. Will Robinson fighting for it. He's down to the 41. He'll be two yards shy. And Presbyterian cannot stop the clock. So this will run down to about a minute 24 to go. If they stop him for the first down, they're which is a, just a good two yard. Hampton's got to get a first down, that's it. Somebody's, somebody on defense is gonna have to take, take a shot to try to penetrate up in there and stop him. Will Robinson will stay in the backfield. He's joined by tight end Jaleel Purrier as they go. Going man, man press coverage, everybody's going. Robinson, first He's down. It. He's got it. They to the 37. The, the horses up front. Instead of gashing in there, Presbyterian couldn't get any penetration. Hampton got the first down. It's all kneeled down from here on out due to a missed extra point. Just a heartbreaking loss for PC sideline. Should be a tie game, and Hampton should be playing for a, a field goal drive. Go down and win. One more play, one more snap of the ball. 
It's the ever-present dilemma, John, where kind of twofold. Number one, probably shouldn't come down to that with the way Presbyterian's offense played in the third quarter. Really didn't give themselves the chance that they had to kind of extend their lead from earlier. And at the same time, it's also your job as a kicker to finish in those situations. So, well, you when you're a kicker, you live for that situation. You want to kick the game-winning field goal or game tying extra point or whatever. That's what you're there for. I mean, and you're there. That's just that's the only thing you do is that's your job. I mean, you're just doing your job. You're not doing anything extra special. You're just doing your job. So, I, I, I think these kids on both sides of the field played their tails off. Uh, PC, you saw the emotion or the deflation on on the, the run into the kicker, the muff punt, that that series, that drive that gave Hampton three points, which is the difference in the game. Time to take a look at your Hardy star of the game, and you can see him in the middle of your screen. Running back for Hampton, Will Robinson. His second game as the primary back after going 98 yards last week against Kennesaw State. Racks up 154 yards, and that score in the third quarter. A career day for him on 24 carries. He just kept gashing the blue hose, John. Well, you know, and and I can't say it's all him. He's got an offensive line that was doing a yep. heck of a job for him. They were putting holes up there. You know, they got caught for a lot of holds and holding penalties or, and uh, three or four in the first half. They didn't have any the second half, and that's what made the difference right there. You know, they didn't get any penalties, and they started blocking just as good, and they were gashing them out. They got a lot of those runs called back in the first half, and the, uh, and the passes – they had some, some completions that got called back. Press, uh, excuse me, Hampton rushes for 262 yards against the Blue Hose in the winning effort today, 24-23 to 23 the final. So next up for the Blue Hose, a trip to Charleston to take on Charleston Southern in a Big South showdown next Saturday at 6. Again, Hampton goes to a bye, and the Pirates will do so at 3-3. Three and three. Presbyterian falls to 2-3 and three on the season. Well, that'll do it for us here from Bailey Memorial Stadium in Clinton, South Carolina, 24-23 the final. The Hampton Pirates knock off the Presbyterian Blue Hose in a preview of next year's Big South Conference Showdown. For John Ork and our entire production crew, I'm Brett Williams saying thanks for coming along with us today. We will see you again soon. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>